Tulsa Beard, part one. The fat and the curious. I don't got friends. I got family. <laughs> I don't have friends. I got family. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise. Swearsies, it's just a fact, and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up if you want. You know, I can't live your life for you, you know. <laughs> I do appreciate you showing up, though. Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. It's actually from my personal subreddit, r slash reads, and it is from the illustrious patron contributor user Luca was a race car, just race car. <laughs> Primus fans out there, yeah, you know what I'm getting at. I want to say driver so bad, but I can't. Um, he wrote the saga of Mudbeard, and now we are getting a bit more into the Luca cinematic universe, which I'm super excited to do. This is the beginning of the Tulsa Beard saga. Yes, I am opening up quite a few sagas. Maybe I'll regret that a bit later on down the line, but for now, it, it seems like a great idea. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We are live streaming this on Twitch. If you haven't come through and seen me quite yet, I would appreciate that. And if you have, then hello. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this neckbeard stories uh, cringe. <laughs> Tulsa Beard Part 1 The Fat and the Curious. I don't got friends. I got family. <laughs> I don't have friends. I got family. Uh, yeah, he ain't too fast. Maybe he's a little furious, but it's like that, that nerd rage. You know what I'm saying? That's normal for uh, folks like myself. I guess we'll just have to see how it unfolds. Uh, freaking subscribe to Red X. Whoa, that's, yeah, you should do that. Definitely. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. Howdy! Hi, Luca! Hello, Reddit readers, guys, gals, and all the colors of our beautiful rainbow. Your humble OP here with the tale of a beard who I knew for several years during my stay in Tulsa. For those unfamiliar with me or my tale of mud beard, I will summarize, and actually we probably need to get Mudbeard together as a compilation at some point. It's not quite far enough out that I feel like people will want to relive it, but soon, soon. Everything starts, as my tales usually do, with Lily. Lily was my paramour for most of my young adult life. We'd known each other since high school, fell in love long distance via a mud, which is a multi-user dungeon. For the youngins in the audience that don't know about text-based adventuring, it is pretty fun, actually. <laughs> and we were on again, off again, until we finally moved in with one another in 2008. I spent some time in Memphis with Lily before Hurricane Katrina forced us apart in 2005. From 2005 through much of 2008, was another off period for us. I was trying to get on my feet in Tulsa, thanks to a friend from Gaia Online taking me in pretty much sight unseen. Well, that's what goes around comes around, right? I think you were a much better roommate than Mudbeard, so you, you, you got some karma to bank on there, and thank God for that, honestly. And that friend does get a shout out. Thank you, Rachel. I'll never forget what you did for me. If you happen to read this, I want you to know that I will always cherish the short time that we had together. If I weren't so oblivious or stupid, I would have appreciated you more. God damn, that sounds like another story within itself, but uh, for another time, for another time. Lily will again be but a framing device for this tale. One day, the Ballad of Lily may be told, but that is not this day. I landed a job working for a satellite TV provider, thanks again, Rachel, doing technical support. I had started to make friends, and with that out of the way, let's get the cast list going. Satellite TV provider, like hooking it up or just selling it? Because I got some respect for the dudes that come and hook it up. I got no love for the people that are trying to sell me the ESPN sports package, okay? I don't even watch sports ball. But they're like, if you want to get Cartoon Network, then you have to buy the sports package. I'm like, that don't make no sense. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna buy any of it. Just just hang up the phone. Uh, anyways, yeah, the cast list. OP, that's a me. Bean pull of a guy with a burgeoning alcohol problem as a treatment for a sleep disorder that I didn't yet know that I had. Beardy tendencies. <laughs> I like that. But overall, just a dude trying to make it. God, aren't we all? <laughs> My one pride and joy, a 2002 Mitsubishi Eclipse GT. Did you think that my name was just a random Primus reference? No. For a short time, in Tulsa, Luca was a race car driver. A and he drove so goddamn fast, and he never did win no checkered flags, but he never did come in last. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting me do it. <laughs> I just felt it bursting out of me. We also had Ray, a black man with legit anime hair. Looked like Cloud Strife most days, and would spend hours getting it just right. He lived with me for a while as a couch surfer, a co-worker and friend. He owned an old 80s Toyota Supra, and for the entirety of this tale, he would rather spend his time under his car than under a woman. Legit attractive dude, and had women falling all over him, but he showed no interest. I'm not gonna ask about his sexuality. <laughs> That's fine. If you like cars better, if you want to focus on what you want to focus on, that shouldn't be anything weird. It's curious why it becomes something of note, uh, but maybe, yeah, it is just Luca telling us sort of about what the guy's like. We've also got Matt, the broiest bro dude to ever bro, dude. Party demon, whoa! <laughs> A casual enjoyer of weebery but would rather be cruising the streets in his 90s Subaru Impreza coupe stuffed with WRX parts. Met him through Ray, super chill guy. One of the few people that I keep in contact with to this day. Short, curly hair, and he rocked the soul patch. Hey, me too though. <laughs> I guess all of these are like uh, street racer car dudes or something like that, which is fine. I'm glad Luca is making friends off of the internet, honestly. Sometimes we need that. Crazy Matt was the patron saint of alcoholism and X. Oh boy. <laughs> he drove a red stock Mustang that his rich daddy bought him, worked to afford car insurance, also met him through Ray. Wiry young man who probably tested positive for more STDs than I even know exist. If Glenn Quagmire was a racer, and an alcoholic, then yeah, you'd have crazy Matt. Whoa, second party demon, whoa. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure which one. I guess Matt will get a Travolta voice or something like that. We got to see how their first line comes out. I, I can't decide our voices for him just based off of that. Not quite yet anyways. And then we got Tulsa Beard. I know what voice I'm doing for him. <laughs> Insisted that everyone call him Draven. <laughs> oh god uh because of course he wanted to have a super cool street name usually street names are earned it's not something that you pick for yourself what the hell <laughs> uh, and why draven oh god he drove a white 90s mitsubishi eclipse convertible that his rich uncle bought for him a fan of fingerless gloves, though he didn't wear a fedora. Looked like comedian John Gabrus's twin. Spelled like B.O. and Axe's flavor of the month. Oh, Draven, Lord help us. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what I can say about that. Yeah, he seems like a character. And I'm sure we'll learn more than we ever wanted to know about him. So this will be a story with a focus on Tulsa Beard, but... It's also a chronicle of my life pre-Lily in Tulsa. As such, Tulsa Beard may not feature in every chapter of this saga, but he will be the focal point of many a chapter. Interesting way to do it, but we'll see how you pull it off. <laughs> Disclaimer, of course, beards are gross and crass, and they do gross, crass things. If anything beard adjacent makes you squicky, well, now's the time to check out. Also, with over a decade between then and now, I obviously won't actually remember conversations or events, etc. verbatim, 
but I will be telling this story to the best of my ability with the personalities of all involved in TAC with as much memory as I have. With the stage and the character set, let's begin with chapter one of Tulsa Beard. This installment, Tulsa Beard, the Fat and the Curious. I got friends, I got family. <laughs> I can't stop saying it, it's stuck in my head now. I had been living in Tulsa for a few months by now. I had my own apartment and Ray was living with me uh, unofficially. He had let the electric bill run up into the thousands at his own apartment and thus had no power. So he slept on my living room floor despite me having a couch. Oh God, I don't, I don't know if I like Ray too much, honestly. <laughs> uh, that is just gross negligence, is it not? He had recently purchased the Supra I mentioned earlier after selling his old Eclipse for scrap after blowing the engine, trying to pace a souped up caddy. Oh, Ray, y you are a strange fellow. You're making some bad choices already, but I'm gonna let it slide. Take it with a grain of salt. It was morning, and as usual, Ray and I were both sleeping off a good 24 pack of beer after spending the evening beating each other to death in Guilty Gear on the PlayStation 2. Oh, Guilty Gear is lit, dude. <laughs> That's one of the fighting games that I never hear mentioned. I never locked my apartment, so Matt had made his way into the apartment a little bit before noon, slipped the Steel Angel Kurumi DVD into the PS2, cranked the volume, and woke us up with that awful, weeby theme song. I jolted awake at the noise and the familiar, not sure if still drunk or just hung over feeling came over me. Yeah, I've been there a time or two. The answer is usually still drunk because I didn't sleep for long enough. <laughs> Most of my drinking days were in the Navy. To be fair, they woke you up early. I slipped on some pants and toddled into the living room <laughs> where Matt was gleefully dancing around Ray's still snoring form and poking at the poor man with his toe. I drunkenly stumbled to the fridge and popped the tab on another beer. Hair of the dog. <laughs> I closed the open front door and turned off the TV. Yeah, what the hell are you doing, Matt? You can't even close the front door, sneaking into my house, etc. I don't think I like anybody in this story so far. <laughs> OP, Matt, could you have picked a worse way to wake me up, Matt? Well, I was trying to wake up Ray, but... We both looked down at his still form, softly breathing. I was certain that he was faking it. After a few seconds, Ray uttered, fucking finally, and punctuated his wakefulness with a fart <laughs> as he stumbled to his feet and shuffled to the shower like a half-drunk zombie. <laughs> oh, beer farts, that's bad. You just crop dust the living room and leave? Curse you, Ray! <laughs> Matt beamed at me and dove over the back of the couch and re-emerged with a plain-looking cardboard box. Matt, Merry Christmas, dude! Whoa! OP, a little early, yeah? But thanks, man. He presented the box to me, unwrapped, and I opened it up. Inside was a brand new HKS cold air intake. I was overjoyed. We exchanged the bro dude one-armed hug slash back slap and made small talk while Ray showered. Once he emerged, I took my turn and got properly dressed. Matt, so wanna install your Christmas present, man? OP, oh hell yeah. This is some car dude stuff that's going on right now. And I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> Let's talk about car stuff. I'm like, yeah, I, I put gas in it. Great. <laughs> so off we went down the stairs of my second story apartment and into the parking lot. Matt and I got to work installing the intake on my Eclipse while Ray tinkered with the hydraulic lift on the hatch of his Supra. The cool December air was beaten away by the heated anticipation of the new shiny for my car. Oh, precious! <laughs> Soon enough, yes, the intake was installed. 
and we gave the car a test run around the parking lot to make sure that nothing uh, rattled loose. Yeah, that's probably a good way to do it. <laughs> With the testing done and everything in working order, we decided as a group that food was in order. We made our way to Crazy Matt's apartment. He lived in the same complex that I did, and we let ourselves in. Because yeah, none of us was smart enough to lock doors in a big city. Read, we were stupid. And I'm really surprised that we never got robbed. Yeah, this is not a great idea. I mean, apartment complex, I guess, is a little bit safer. Maybe. As long as you trust your neighbors. Not something I would do. <laughs> the apartment was a loft style, with the living room on the ground level and his bedroom on the second story. We got up to his bedroom to find him stark naked and half on his bed softly snoring at 2 p.m. Well, I'm not gonna shame him for that. I live that YouTuber life. I wake up at like noon 30. Just makes good sense to start the day at one as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> he was probably getting up to some shenanigans. He didn't have regular Matt to come in and play a, a weird anime song for him to wake him up. So we did the only sensible thing possible, and we took turns slapping his naked ass until he was roused. <laughs> uh, now that is some bro dude stuff if I ever heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Never one to miss an opportunity to be a horny weirdo, he let us know that he was awake by wiggling his butt and asking for more. Oh god, y you just ruined this whole situation! No, please stop, you can't! <laughs> Not like this! <laughs> so, with our crew assembled, and everyone eventually dressed, we trudged our way across the street to the nearby TGI Fridays and sat down for a meal. TGI Fridays pretty pricey, bro. I don't, I don't know about this for lunch. <laughs> Miss me with that. With bellies full and mixed drinks had, we made our way back to the apartment complex and to my apartment, where we played games until the sun began its descent. Tonight... Tonight was Friday. Oh, that's why you went to TJ Friday. Now it all makes sense. They're only open on Fridays. That's not true. <laughs> and Friday in Tulsa means cruising memorial. And cruising memorial means street shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Let's get in our cars. I got some new shinies or something like that. I mean, I think there's a street racing scene anywhere you go. There was one in Hollywood when I lived in Burbank. But I mean, especially in Tulsa, it, it strikes me as not much else happening. So good. I, I'm glad that you guys had the cars to keep you entertained. We all climbed into our cars and we knew the plan. Cruise, have fun, meet at the carpet and tile store parking lot to flex and preen at about 10 p.m. Man, this is some real car guy shit. Completely outside of my frame of reference. <laughs> but it is interesting to get a glimpse into it, isn't it? We've got so much trucker stuff going on, and now we've got race car things happening. Maybe I'm gonna have to learn about engines uh, in order to continue reading these stories. I had a blast in my car. A new cold air intake wasn't enough to squeeze more ponies out of my car in any appreciable way, but it sure changed the tone that the engine made, and I was happy as a clam. I even managed to pull on someone in an identical car in an impromptu stoplight to stoplight race. Hell yeah! Pull up next and rev the engines. Rum rum! I think I've done this once or twice and I lost every single time, so... <laughs> Not fond memories as far as I'm concerned, but for car guys, hell yeah! Tonight was a good night. And I pulled into the carpet and tile store, parked up, propped my hood open, as was custom, and went searching for Ray, or Matt, my leather trench coat whipping in the rising wind. Well, we got the trench coat on, and it's leather. I, I gotta say, I'm sort of jealous. <laughs> you think that I dunk on that being like a neckbeard thing, but one, it seems like it's weather appropriate, and two, it's a leather trench coat, bro. Th that's always gonna be cool, I'm pretty sure. And the Matrix just came out, didn't it? 
<laughs> oh, Lordy. And OP even takes it upon himself to say, yeah, I was a trench coat guy. <laughs> to be fair, I was told that it was a good look for me. I couldn't pull one off now, but back then I was in better shape and had better style. I was still shaking off the goth kid that I was in New Mexico, and the trench coat was one of the last items to go. I spotted Ray and made my way over to him. I said all I got to say about the leather trench coat. I think it's cool. I wouldn't rock it in the Philippines, but I would rock it uh, if it's weather appropriate. <laughs> That's what I heard it. Blasting into the open air came the pace thrumming of a heavy bass and a rattling license plate. I knew the song. It was some Eurobeat song from Initial D. Gas, 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 gonna step on the gas. <laughs> <laughs> and soon enough, the sound pulled into the parking lot, and its source was revealed. A white 90s drop-top eclipse with a bearded man behind the wheel. Portly, but not obese. He had the top down. In December. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Whatever. The music cut off, and he exited the car, wearing a trench coat. Oh, no. See, this is why Luca got rid of that trench coat. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to look like that guy. That's how I look? Nah, nah, nah. Wind it back. <laughs> His eyes scanned the parking lot, and he made eye contact with me. He must have immediately felt a trench coat brotherhood because he started making his way over to us. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, like I said during the Neckbeard Iceberg video, um, it's a dangerous thing to dress like a beard because, yeah, they will feel a kinship. You will get into some conversations that you don't necessarily want to have. By the time he made his way to us, Matt and Crazy Matt had taken their places next to me and Ray. He stopped in front of me and shot out a fingerless gloved hand. Not one to be rude, I took his hand and shook it, smiling. Great, now your whole hand is orange. <laughs> OP says, hey, new face, I smiled. Nice eclipse. Ray used to have one, but it wasn't a drop top. You need some sound deadening around your license plate, though, because your bass rattles it. Tulsa Beer beams a smile back at me, saying, hey, thanks. I just got the system installed, so I'm still working out the kinks. I love my little Kyoko, though. Oh, oh, <laughs> uh, this is, this is not good. All right, <laughs> Kyoko, he named his car after a, a tiny Japanese woman because he wants to be inside of her. Now, I'm not against naming your cars in any way, shape, or form. You know, I had a Honda Accord that I called Ron Burgundy. I had a Hyundai Accent that I called Hi-Ho Silver, which was kind of an ironic name because only four cylinders and slow as shit, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm for naming cars. But Kyoko? With the trench coat? With the fingerless gloves? I would be out of here already, bro. I can't do none of this. Uh-uh! <laughs> uh, I instantly knew that he was talking about his car. We had all given our cars names, too. And we all had weeby car names. Oh, Luca, what was your car named? Please tell me. I won't think less of you. <laughs> I want to know. It was Mitsumi, wasn't it? <laughs> Birds of a feather, I do suppose. But we kept our car names to ourselves. Only people in our crew knew about them. We were nerds playing at being racers and tuners, so we held our cards pretty close to our chest. To be fair, most tuners do have a nerdy streak. This guy was letting his freak flag fly, though, and I wasn't sure whether to be impressed or embarrassed. Yeah, definitely not impressed. I mean, it is cool that he's being himself and all that stuff, but I, I don't think I want to be involved, man. <laughs> Especially now. I'm too old for any of this. OP says, all right, new face. Want to have a go? I got an Eclipse too. Let's uh, get to know each other. I wanted to impress my friends, and honestly, I thought that I could take a drop top. Tulsa Beard, 
All right, man. But you might get mad when you see my tail lights. OP. All right. We got a race. You know where to go? Tulsa Beard. Actually, no. He sheepishly looked down. It's my first night really getting into this stuff. You don't say. <laughs> what? I mean, I guess everybody has a first night, but yeah, you probably don't want to let on to that. I'm going to go ahead and put my money on Luca, not just because dude's a neckbeard, but yeah, it's his first night. Why are you going to bet on the new guy? <laughs> and he's already out here talking big stuff. Yeah, check out my taillights. Like, bro, uh, do you even know how to drive that car? <laughs> OP just said, all right, just follow me and my buddies. There's a lonely stretch out by the Bass Pro Shop that's not patrolled, and it's nice for a good quarter. Fast forward to the place. I was stationed at the beginning of the track, with Ray acting as a forward spotter, Matt at the finish acting as a rear spotter, and Crazy Matt just watching from a nearby parking lot. A few stragglers from the carpet and tile made their way here as well to size up the new guy. Oh god, he's gonna make a... <laughs> He's gonna pull his whole ass out because he's trying to look cool on his first night. <laughs> I don't think that this is the way to do it, buddy. But a beard's ego <sighs> just never listens. <laughs> I explained the rules to him. Go on three, race to Matt. First one there wins. No stakes, just a gentleman's race. Racing for pinks was exceptionally rare. I'd only seen one pink race in my time in Tulsa, and the loser just kept going, <laughs> and we never saw him again. <laughs> uh, that's the way to do it, isn't it? You're like, no, I I'm not giving up this car. I put too much time, money, effort into it. I'd rather just leave town. <laughs> uh, big brain time. I mean, also kind of a welching on a bet, but you know, who's going to hold his feet to the fire when push comes to shove? He's out of there. God, I love that. <laughs> beep, 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 boom! I launched, pulling on the white eclipse pretty easily. My car wasn't weighed down by the internals required to house a convertible top, and the extra bracing required on drop tops to keep them from folding like an open tin can. Plus, I had V6, and he was rocking an I-4. I didn't push my car too hard, but made sure that I stayed in front well enough to secure the race. After we passed Matt, everyone jumped into cars and we made our way to the nearby lot. I mean, if you're in it for racing, yeah, probably convertible top, not the way to go. However, convertible tops are cool as hell. I love that, especially having lived in California. Ooh, <laughs> best feel in the world. Drop top rolling down the five freeway. God, good memories, good memories. Tulsa Beard jumped out of his car. I expected him to be angry. I expected him to make excuses, but he ran up with a huge grin on his face. Hey, that was so much fun. <laughs> he was out of breath, but still spoke a few dozen decibels longer than anyone else around. I have a cat back. How did you beat me? He wheezed, still catching his breath. OP, well... A drop top isn't that great for going fast. There's a lot of extra weight in those. Plus, your model's a naturally aspirated I-4. My V6 isn't boosted, but your car is more for show, not for fast. Tulsa Beard. Well, I'm gonna make it fast enough to beat you. <laughs> he said this with the confidence that one can only have from the extra testosterone that usually accompanies your first illegal street race. God damn, he doesn't seem like that bad of a guy, all things considered. Yeah, slightly beardy, slightly overconfident, but I'm real proud of him for not being a baby about losing the race. However, I think that uh, this facade shall fall away uh, given due time. OP says, yeah, you, you did good for your first time. What's your name? Tulsa Beard. Draven. <laughs> we all laughed. <laughs> Uh, he, he said that shit with a straight face? No way, dude. <laughs> Your parents named you Draven? I don't think so. I think you named yourself after the, the hero that you like to play in League of Legends, right? <laughs> OP just says, 
Well, Draven, <laughs> I said with emphasis on his fake name. I'm OP. This is Matt and Ray and, and Crazy Matt. After a little bit of small talk, we decided to head to the Denny's near my apartment to wind down and have some greasy food. Yeah, Denny's the greasiest. You don't know where else to go? Come on down to Denny's. You'll always be disappointed for only $5.99. <laughs> Tulsa Beard was invited, and he happily accepted. And with that, Tulsa Beard was accepted into our little nerdy crew. We eventually learned his name was John, but he would get mad when we didn't call him by his street name. So, of course, we called him John frequently, just to peck at him. <laughs> just be cool with your name, man. <laughs> That's such a weird take. You have to call me by the name I picked for myself. Are you sure about that? <laughs> if you really wanted to be Draven, then don't tell anybody that your name is John. Just insist that your name is Draven, even though you know your entire life is a lie. At least they will call you Draven. <laughs> Might even get used to it eventually. And uh, that, my friends, is where I will leave us for today. A gaggle of guys playing at being street racers, gathered in a mutual love of cars and weebery. Tulsa Beard will show his beardery soon enough, but for today, today he was just a new friend. A bit of an odd duck, but yeah, so were the rest of us. No apologies for grammar or spelling mistakes. Own your mistakes. Luca, out. <laughs> Honestly, a really fun little story. I was happily surprised by this beard. I'm glad that you guys weren't jerks to him. You know, I, I'm glad that he wasn't a jerk to you. You guys are just out there having fun playing cars. And that's what it's really all about. As long as you're not being an asshole elitist car guy, like, I'm pretty cool with car guys. I can learn a lot from car guys, okay? Maybe I shouldn't even call them car guys. That's a bit reductive. They're just guys who enjoy cars and know a hell of a lot more about them than me. So I gotta show them some respect and again, I got to show them respect for taking the street race loss in stride and also accepting this odd duck into their fold. I'm excited to see how Tulsa Beard will progress, perhaps devolve. It might end up with a happy ending. I'm not really sure. Tulsa Beard Part 2. The Ballad of Julie. Oh, Julie. That's a beautiful name, honestly. It's like the daughter of a jeweler. Or maybe she was born in July. All right, I'm going to stop. <laughs> Let's not go down the dad joke route quite yet. Uh, also, freaking subscribe to Red X. Yeah. Do that if you, if you didn't yet. <laughs> also, howdy. Hi. Luca was a race car. Was good with it. Hello, Reddit readers, guys, gals, and all the colors of our beautiful rainbow. Your humble OP here, continuing the tale of Tulsa Beard. Fairly harmless beard, but he ticked many of the beard boxes. We do need more harmless beards to be quite, a, kind of fill the, the hole that Bowler Beard had left in our hearts. I did talk to A-Roxers recently. I guess not that recently. Back in February or something like that. She said she's working on something. So fingers crossed that Bowler Beard will make his reappearance at some point. But uh, for now, we've got Tulsa Beard to fill in the gaps, maybe. I like a harmless beard. A harmless, derpy beard. Uh, it does my heart well. I consider myself sort of a <laughs> harmless, derpy beard, I suppose. I had started a job working for a satellite TV provider as technical support. I had started to make some friends. And with that out of the way, let's get the cast list going. Yeah, just like you got your life going. Good job, Luca. You're doing the most out here. And the cast. OP, that's a me. Drinks to sleep, new-ish to the big city and looking for love. In all the wrong places. Oh no, is Julie bad? Is Julie gonna be bad? <laughs> Alright, don't spoil it for me. Ray was a black, cloud strife looking dude with a cheerful attitude and a love of his Supra. Worked with me at the satellite provider. Matt, Al Bundy, the early years. <laughs> he worked at a shoe store, but he was a friendly guy and a bit of a bro dude who loved his white Impreza. Yeah, they were all car dudes, if you, if you didn't pick that up quite yet. Which ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm glad they could bro out. I'm glad they have something to bond over. 
There was also Crazy Matt, who was Glenn Quagmire with an alcohol problem and a red Mustang. Good looking dude, and he used those looks to bang it out with just about anybody with boobs. Great. <laughs> you playing that like STD bingo card? Good luck. <laughs> Finally, Tulsa Beard insisted that everyone call him uh, Draven. Wow, that's edgy. <laughs> I thought it was a League of Legends references because my mind is poisoned, but people pointed out that it might be a reference from The Crow, which also is a thing, probably a bit more near this time period. He had a bad habit, though, of one-upsmanship and better story-itis, loved his eclipse, fan of fingerless gloves, didn't wear a fedora, looked kind of like comedian John Gabrus's twin, hygiene-deprived, but cheerful. Uh, beards are just like slightly smarter Kevins. Does that make sense? Are we doing a tier list of this eventually? Perhaps that's that's on the docket. I don't know. We also had Julie, of course. Certified beard bait. Yeah. <laughs> Frequented an underground club that existed once upon a time called the Extinction Gallery. What? <laughs> Uh, that's so edgy, bro. No wonder Draven would go to the Extinction Gallery. Whoa! A BYOB nightclub with, uh, dubious legality. You had to know someone who knew someone in order to get inside. Rachel introduced me to the place. Ray and I had become regulars, along with Julie. Oh, so it wasn't Draven that met her and dragged her into the group. It was Luca himself. And then... What, Tulsa Beard like makes it really weird and awkward and he starts melading her? I, I got a lot of questions. There's a lot of way this dynamic could go, right? I guess we'll have to just read on and find out. This will be a story with a focus on Tulsa Beard, but it is also a chronicle of my life pre-Lily in Tulsa. As such, Tulsa Beard might not feature in every chapter of this saga, but he will be the focal point of many a chapter. And like I said last time, it seems like an interesting way to do things, but you tell the story, you know, I'm just along for the ride, essentially. Of course, we also need our disclaimer. We should put this disclaimer on Chris Trucker, too. <laughs> Beards are gross and crass, and they do gross, crass things. If anything beard adjacent makes you, uh, squicky, then maybe now's the time to check out. Also, with the decade between then and now, I obviously won't remember conversations, events, etc. verbatim, but I will be telling this story to the best of my ability. With the personalities of all involved intact and with as much memory as I have. With the stage and the character set, let us begin with Chapter 2 of Tulsa Beard, this installment, Tulsa Beard, The Ballad of Julie. I don't know if we're going to get all that much Tulsa Beard in this one. It sounds like it's mostly a, a, a Luca and Julie thing, but I guess we'll have to see. After last installment's race, myself, Ray, Matt, and Draven came along. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> can I call him Tulsa Beard? I really don't want to call him Draven, okay? I'm not buying into this delusion with him. We're not friends like that, all right? <laughs> uh, your name's Tulsa Beard. Just, just be who you are. <laughs> Crazy Matt decided that we was going back to go cruising. It was around midnight 30 and we piled into a Denny's just down the road from my apartment complex. Yeah, that's that's where you go at midnight 30, isn't it? Denny's. And we're too poor to order food, so we just drink coffee for four hours. <laughs> what a fucking nightmare. Don't even tip the waitresses. God, I was such a little dick in high school, wasn't I? Thought I was so cool, but I was just I was just a little asshole. That's what it was. Julie was sat at a booth, poring over her books for homework in between bites of her Grand Slam. Oh, she balling out. She got a Grand Slam and everything, right? <laughs> what, you read books? What? You, you think you're better than me, huh? <laughs> I'm just minding my business. <laughs> Myself, Ray, and Matt knew her at this point, and we all pined for her. Oh, she is supreme beard bait, I see. Except for Ray. Ray only had room in his heart for his car. She was very conventionally attractive and had a witty, wry personality that made us all feel welcome, yet she was unafraid to barb us. 
she was one of the guys if all the guys wanted to also bang her. <laughs> I mean, then she can't really be one of the guys, right? I mean, I guess she could, but it makes it a little awkward. There's just a, a couple added layers of awkwardness in there. Maybe she ignores it. Maybe she's oblivious to it, but women are pretty perceptive generally. I think she probably knows. And that's why she makes with the barbs, right? To shut you down just a little bit. Uh, that's my working theory anyways. A little bit of armchair psychology. <laughs> well, we all made ourselves comfortable in a booth adjacent to Julie. And we exchanged hellos. Draven, however, Tulsa Beard, <laughs> was struck. Tulsa Beard. Uh, hey, hello, ma'am. <laughs> oh, God. Ma'am. Ma'am is what you call, like, the local librarian or something like that. Don't call somebody your your peer who you're trying to bang. Don't call them ma'am. <laughs> I understand you think it's respectful, but I, I think just hello is respectful enough, right? Eh, to whom do I have the pleasure of making your acquaintance? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I, I think I'm going to be sick. I think I'm going to be fucking sick. <laughs> Uh, why are you talking like that? Stop it! <laughs> Julie laughed. <laughs> it's Julie, Romeo. See, even she's like, your language is too flowery and it's awkward, but I guess I'll let it slide. She extended a hand for a handshake, which was taken. Draven then knelt like a man to be knighted. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop it! Uh, I'm dying inside. This is, this is second-hand cringe, but it is hitting me so deep. Why are you doing that? He leaned forward to kiss her hand. <laughs> please. Please, no more. He probably thought he looked really cool, but he looked more like a fat guy picking a gummy bear up off the ground. <laughs> Uh, this is, this is, this is deep, man. I don't understand how somebody could amp themselves up to do this. In public, no less. I don't know how many other people are in this Denny's, but, uh, even just the group is enough. Nobody should have to witness this. <laughs> Julie, being the unflappable type, but also not one for bullshit, accepted the kiss and then patted Tulsa Beard on the head. <laughs> Uh, arise, fateful dog. <laughs> she then gave him a look that would wither a man like Jack Frost, punching you in the dick while you're trekking through Siberia during the winter solstice. <laughs> God damn it. <dude. laughs> I mean, at this point, who wouldn't be an ice queen? You are going leaps and bounds to make this way more awkward than it needs to be. Just hello. My name is such and such. What's yours? <laughs> why, why are you going all over the top with this? Thanks. I hate it. <laughs> Julie says, never again, Romeo. She then turned to face Ray. Where did you find this one? <laughs> Ray shrugged and nudged his head in my direction. I laughed. Uh, we met him cruising. He's harmless. New to cars. His name is... Draven. Draven, this is Julie. <laughs> uh, Draven, bro. Stop. <laughs> I guess maybe OP didn't know his name at this point, but I'm not going to call him that. I refuse to believe that your parents named you that. <laughs> Tulsa Beard says, <sighs> Julie. He sighed while sidling next to me in the booth. From the look on his face, it was clear that he was fast-forwarding through a whole lifetime with Julie. <laughs> uh, you already blew it, bro. Whatever you're thinking is never going to happen because within the first minute, you made this shit horribly awkward. A fateful meeting at Denny's. Some witty back and forth. Some dates. Marriage. Kids, fights, old folks on a porch swing, and dying while holding hands. <laughs> it took me physically snapping him out of it to break this horny trance. 
Yeah, it probably wasn't even as romantical as you're making it out to be, Luca. He's probably like, anal, oral, hand job at a movie theater, roadhead. <laughs> then again, he doesn't seem like overly coom brained. That's just sort of what I ascribe to neckbeards most of the time. <laughs> but I don't know. He seemed to be really into it for just like, yeah, imagining a marriage ceremony. OP says, yo, Draven, menu. We're starving. Just pick something. I ordered the appetizer sampler, greasy fired slop, but it was so good with marinara and ranch. Oh God, you guys got enough money to order food at the Denny's? <laughs> That's next level. I guess I stopped going to Denny's once I got out of high school. I haven't been to Denny's since I've actually had money. Maybe I should go back. Maybe I should tip the waitresses that I never tipped. <laughs> Ray got the same thing. Matt ordered a Grand Slam. Draven ordered two full entrees, something with steak and also a moons over my hammy. Oh, and an appetizer. Bro, he, he a hungry boy. You paying 20 bucks for steak and eggs at Denny's? God, who, who are you trying to impress? Oh yeah, Julie. <laughs> I forgot. He just wants to make sure that she knows that he could ball out when he really wants to. When it comes to steak and eggs, I don't care. No price is too much. Matt, Ray, and I made small talk with Julie while she did her classwork. I believe she was majoring in biology. Sorry if that's wrong, Julie. And yeah, we waited for our food. Eventually, it all arrived with Tulsa Beard's multitude of plates taking up the majority of the table space. We opted then to split our eating endeavor between two booths. Yeah, th this is already super awkward, man. I don't know why you need two entrees and an appetizer. Didn't Luca say in the last episode that he wasn't even that fat? Does he work out? <laughs> What's going on here? He's got an overactive thyroid or something. As we finished up, Julie also stood, placing a black bowler hat on top of her fiery red head, waves of crimson washing over her back. A bowler hat, huh? For, for a chick, I don't know. I used to pine for a punk chick in high school that had like a, a shaved head. And she'd always wear the, these funky hats. Neckbeard hats as you call them nowadays. But yeah, I can see her with a bowler. I can see how it would be maybe uh, cute or something. And no wonder it drives the beardy boys wild. <laughs> yeah, this, this all is making sense to me now. The gallery? She asked us. The gallery? We almost all responded. All but Tulsa Beard, who choked on his moons over my hammy and, almost scrambling, got to his feet. Bro still ain't done. See, you, you ain't even big enough to eat all that you ordered, are you? <laughs> well, what, what's the gallery? He asked with a mix of desperation and panic, again at about twice the decibel level of what would be considered polite talk. Yeah, he's so scared he's gonna get ditched right now. No, that's fine. You're in good. You're a little bit weird. <laughs> sort of borderline, but you haven't been ousted quite yet anyways. Julie then shushed him. God, that woman. She knew what she was about and she reveled in it. Yeah, we got a manic pixie dream girl come to life. <laughs> Except she ain't really giving any of these boys the time of day. She's like, we can interact, but I don't want to be involved romantically with anybody. Ever. I I'm studying. And, th and that's the way it should be, I guess. She definitely knew that we all wanted her, and she teased at us. We were all donkeys, pulling her cart, dangling a carrot, but goddamn hee-haw, bitch, let's go! <laughs> Hey, everybody, we're all gonna get late. Uh, you're never gonna get a taste of that carrot. Or she's never gonna get a taste of your carrot. Wait, that that would imply she actually wants the carrot. So yeah, you guys ain't getting a nibble, all right? <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. Like, if you guys could just be friends and, and be cool with it, I guess that's fine. It seems to be the case. Everybody here seems to know the deal. It's not too awkward, I guess. But it does seem like a, a slightly strange dynamic for a friend group in my opinion. Julie says, now, now, Draven, you don't know unless you know. Besides, she gestured to his half-eaten feast. You still look hungry. <laughs> she, <laughs> uh, she is, she is the girl that most legbeards wish that they were. 
All right. <laughs> She's not like other girls, but like legitimately. She gave him a wry smile and left. All of us following behind her and into our respective vehicles. Tulsa Beard scrambled outside behind me, tugging at my arm. Dude, he whispered, but loudly. Where's the gallery? What gallery? Where are you going? <laughs> oh, man. You gotta feel kind of bad for him. But also, if you have to ask, you'll never know. Just play it cool, man. Be like, all right, I'll catch you guys later. You're right. I did order a shit ton of food. Why you gotta leave some moons over my hammy there? You paid good money for it. Go back inside and eat it. <laughs> I shrugged. If she wanted you to know, then you'd know. Maybe next time, Romeo. So, uh, see you next time, yeah? You gonna cruise again? He beamed that trademark wide-ass grin at me. The kind of smile that made you think that he was an innocent puppy desperate for love. You bet. I can't wait. It was such a good time. He asked again, though, just for good measure. What's this gallery, though? Is it some art thing? Oh, no. OP's gonna blow it wide open. <laughs> no. The Extinction Gallery. It's not art. Maybe next time, man. He's gonna Google that right now. He's gonna show up. I guarantee it. Sneaking in the back door and all that type of stuff. 100%. <laughs> and with that, I left Tulsa Beard in the parking lot. He lingered as we all piled into our cars and began to make our way downtown. Making my way downtown towards the Extinction Gallery. <laughs> With Julie, do 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 I hate myself for that, but really, I, I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> so we all arrived at the gallery. It was an unassuming building with no external markings, tucked away in a quiet corner of downtown. Myself, Ray, Matt, and Julie all went to the entrance, pulled open the door, and the smell of jarum clove cigarettes hit us full in the face. Oh, clove cigarettes. So tasty, but so terrible for you. <laughs> Forget about it. They do smell great, though, too. Uh, there was an airlock type of system. The inner door opened by a bouncer. We all paid our club dues and walked inside. Various alcohols in hand. Club dues. God, I hate that. Entrance fee? Miss me with all of that. If your club's good enough, then I'll pay to stay there. <laughs> Miss me with the entrance fee, though. I, I can't handle that. What if I enter? What if I decide I don't like it? I want to go home. I just wasted 20 bucks. <laughs> the Extinction Gallery was, to my new kid in the big city brain, something of a wonder. It was like a hot topic and Final Fantasy VII's Midgar collided into a single building. That does sound like, like weeb paradise to me. Three stories with the basement secluded for people who wanted to talk, the main floor for dancing, and the top floor for, well, activities. Activities? What kind of activities? <laughs> I want to know about the activities, OP. Are they, are they up there doing it? <laughs> yes, Mark, that's right, they're doing it. You really have no imagination whatsoever, do you? The main floor was littered with seating in random areas, rooms and hallways that led nowhere, and old arcade cabinets that only half worked. Half worked? Like, 50% of them are functional? Or like, some of the buttons just don't work? Where are these club dues going? That's what I want to know. If it's really such a cool club, why wouldn't you keep it maintained? Huh? How do you expect people are going to come back here? I guess you keep it exclusive, you know? You're like, oh, you can't come. And then once they finally get in, they're like, this is the best place ever because I was excluded at first and now I belong. It's like a psychological thing. All along every surface was local artwork on the walls, paintings, hanging from the ceilings, metal calliopes of sharp edge and steel that made one think of the torture rooms in Hellraiser. Yeah, this is edgy as hell, bro. I wanna go here, this is super edgy. Even a lot of the furniture was modified or completely handcrafted by local artists and hung in the air was the unmistakable scent of those clove cigarettes and, of course, body spray. Oh, yes, the body spray. That's why they had the airlock at the beginning of the club. Airlock ain't such a bad idea when dealing with neckbeards, you know? 
The whole problem with the airlock is that you're trapping all of the alcohol vapor from all of this Axe body spray. I'm surprised that those clove cigarettes haven't caused this whole thing to go up in like a giant fireball. <laughs> this is not a good place to be. I want to go home. <laughs> the very back room of the main floor was where the dancing took place. And that was where Julie loved to spend her time, swaying to the steady thrumming of some local emo core EDM DJ tucked away in a corner. Other people danced, of course, but my eyes always somehow found their way to Julie. Oh, come on, man, let it go. <laughs> she's not interested. She loves the chase, but she's never going to give it up. Don't waste your affection on that, all right? <laughs> At least as far as I'm concerned. I wouldn't bother. She moved fluidly, lost in the music, ignoring the world and its worries, all while looking like Gerard Way had a hot sister. <laughs> That's a really weird way to put it, but okay. I guess I could see it. She never would accept a partner, opting to dance alone. I found myself sitting in a corner, my own clove cigarette pursed between my lips, between swigs of some cheap swill that I bought at the local quick trip before we started cruising. At least you, you, you stopped driving before you started drinking. That's great. Also, this chick is like quite obviously just collecting beta orbiters, right? <laughs> There's no nice way to put it. I'm, I'm not into this style, really. Once I figured out that this is how it was going to be, I'd be out in a second. Unless, like, you you just want a legitimate friendship. But even then, she seems to, like, love the smell of her own farts just a little bit. <laughs> I'm sort of turning on Julie. I'm sorry this is happening, Luca, but it's just how I feel. Especially in the first read-through. I might look back tomorrow and be like, I was too harsh. But I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's the first impression. Ray was dancing as well. And like Julie, he was ignoring the attention of women. A.K.A. collecting beta orbiters. <laughs> And he was opting to just feel the music. Matt was sat down next to me, and in here, he stuck out like a sore thumb. Ray and I still held on to some goth looks, but Matt was the jockish type, who wore Abercrombie, mirrored sunglasses, and fashionable tennis shoes with blue jeans. He was happy, though, to be with his friends at what he felt was an exclusive members-only club. Which, to be honest, it was. And really, that exclusivity is probably the only thing still holding it up. <laughs> and yeah, it doesn't really matter what you look like, right? I get that it's sort of a emo core goth club or whatever, but I can still come in here wearing Abercrombie, right? My money is still good here, right? Say right. <laughs> I was beginning to get tipsy, and a young black short stack was pulling at my arms to drag me onto the dance floor. Aw, oh, hell yeah! I obliged, and we lost ourselves in the music for a while, dancing together in the way that emo mid-2000s people do. Just basically just bobbing your head. <laughs> like the goth kids on South Park. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna be in the talent show. About 15 minutes had passed when I heard my name being called from the front of the house. I toddled my way towards the entrance where a bouncer is basically holding back a figure from entering the cathedral. Called it. Called it! Two guesses as to who that figure is. <laughs> Do you know this guy? Marcus asks, and I peer at the man. Trench coat, fingerless gloves, short curly hair, and a patchy beard. Uh, I knew him. It was Tulsa Beard. God damn it, I knew him all right. He must have finished his meal at Denny's and made his way here, somehow. This was a place where only people who knew people could get in. We'd been there for hours. My only guess is that during my explanation of the gallery, I must have mentioned downtown, and he drove around mindlessly until he spotted our vehicles. <laughs> Damn, dude. He really is like a lost little puppy. I feel bad for him, but come on, dude. You don't really have to go to lengths like this to get yourself included. People will think you're way cool if you're just like, all right, man, see you later. You know what I mean? Maybe next time you, you'll get to go. Also, I want to point out if everybody has to know somebody to get in, then how did the first people get in? Oh, 
club must have not been very popping for a while. And then they realized that by keeping people out, they could make it more popular. Because it's exclusive. Tulsa Beard shouted out, uh, OP, it's me, Tulsa Beard, we met tonight. You gotta vouch for me, dude. By this point, I was pretty drunk, and 4 a.m. was coming upon us, but through the haze, I remember Julie rebuffing him. She didn't want him here. I'm not proud of what I did, but then again, he also basically stalked his way here. OP said, I got no idea who you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it's sort of a shitty thing, but I don't know. You caught between a rock and a hard place at this point. Tulsa Beard's out here being a weirdo. Julie's also being a weirdo in like a completely different way. So who do you side with? It doesn't matter. Either way, you, you probably lose at least a little bit. But I wonder if this is like a turning point uh, for, for Tulsa Beard. Super villain origin stories right here. Huh. <laughs> I could see the betrayal and tears welling up in Tulsa Beard's eyes as Marcus dragged him out of the entryway and shut the door. God damn. Cold blooded! <laughs> I made my way back to the dance floor and to the short stack, who was enamored with me, and we continued our formalities. It wasn't long, though, that the light came on and people began to be ushered out into the hazy pre morning cold. There was a whispering in my ear and I knew what had to be done. I never knew her name. All I knew is that I drove her back to my apartment, we had sex, and I ordered her a cab rather than let her stay the night. There you go. I mean, that's what she's looking for, isn't it? If she really wanted to stay, she would've asked to stay, right? Personally, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> I'm into short stacks, but I don't do shit like that. But as far as Luca goes, hell yeah, dude. I'm glad you got it in. <laughs> Good on you, boy. And he even rebuffs himself in the in the next sentence. Don't do that, all right? You, you did, you, you're a grown consenting adult. Do what you wanna do. It's not for me, but no worries. You know what I'm saying? Luca says, I'm not proud of the man that I was back then. But then again, making someone do the walk of shame is hardly the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> I'm sorry I never learned your name. I'm sorry I drove under the influence. I'm sorry you didn't stay the night. Rachel hurt me. For reasons I now understand, because I was the idiot, not her, but it hurt. Oh, there's a, there's a Rachel story here. I guess that's like a whole side tangent of the, the Luca cinematic universe. I put all of my pain into that woman that night. She deserves so much better than the man that I was back then, and my pretending that she didn't exist at subsequent visits to the gallery was a slap in her face. She stopped coming, and I know that that was my fault. Yeah, ah, uh, God, that's rough. Don't pretend that she doesn't exist. You just be like, hey, we had a good time. All right, see you around. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm a little bit torn, but I can't lay into Luca too hard. We've got too many other targets in this story anyways. <laughs> I'm keeping my eyes peeled. The next week just flew by, and Friday night was upon us again. And we were parked at the carpet and tile store just vibing when Tulsa Beard pulled into the parking lot. He got out and walked up to me. A mixture of betrayal and sadness as I walked from my friends to meet him halfway. Tulsa Beard, dude, wh what the fuck? You don't know me? We raced. We ate at Denny's. I thought we were friends. Well, people think a lot of stuff. I don't know, man. Just because we interacted a little bit doesn't mean that you get to be included in everything in my life, all right? There has to be a line drawn in the sand. Do you not understand that? And OP says, look, Julie didn't want you there. Hell, none of us hardly even knew you. I don't know how you found the place, but forget that you did until Julie or myself invite you there. I spit the halfway done cigarette from my lips crushed it under my boot, and got uncomfortably close to him. OP, are we clear? Tulsa Beard shrank a bit. Yeah, man, we're, we're clear. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, look at Luca, big man on campus, aren't you? <laughs> uh, with his exclusive goth club. I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm liking this side, honestly. Good. I clapped a hand on his shoulder and walked him back over to our group. 
he had fucked up, but the truth was that we were all messed up in our own ways. And maybe there was something to be chiseled from this doughy clay. Amends were made, and once again, he was welcomed into our crew. I mean, is it even worth being welcomed back into it? At this point, like, you guys don't want me, I'm, I'm fucking off, you know? <laughs> I don't see a point trying to be with a bunch of people who don't seem to really want to kick it that hard. Anyways, our weekly cruises continued, and our weekly trips to Denny's continued, and our collective pining for Julie also continued. She's loving it, I'm sure. <laughs> In order to make Tulsa Beard not feel unwelcome, we began going to the Extinction Gallery on Saturday nights and doing our cruises on Friday nights. He was a congenial man, if not a little quick to try and one-up a story or to chest thump needlessly. One night after the cruise, Tulsa Beard came with us back to my apartment. Myself and Ray got to the business of murdering one another in Guilty Gear, and Tulsa Beard and Matt were horsing around in the empty space behind the couch. <laughs> Uh, seems a little weird, but all right. We were all drunk, and Tulsa Beard was not one to know his limits. Nor was I, being honest, but I hit it well enough, I think. Yeah, that's probably the alcohol talking. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm looking any drunk, drunker. What? <laughs> Are you making words right now? Eventually, there was a solid thump on the wall between the living room and the kitchen, followed by Tulsa Beard screeching, what, what the fuck, dude? Ow! The game got paused, and Ray and myself looked over the back of the couch, just in time to see Tulsa Beard wind up and punch Matt right in the face. Matt, well, he grabbed Tulsa Beard by the collar and punched him square in the nose. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all been this drunk before. I remember me and Ramtide doing a bit of wrestling every once in a while. <laughs> It's just good fun, isn't it, boy? <laughs> I'm gonna make you squeal like a piggy. And that was how a Mr. Magoo-shaped hole and not entirely unnoticeable blood stain would mark the slow downfall of the aesthetics of that poor apartment. Whatever, I'm renting. Ain't my problem. Ha ha, high five. <laughs> we covered the hole with a beer advertisement we found fluttering after a windy day and a small area rug covered the blood. Things were going well. If well meant that Tulsa Beard was technically a functioning member of our friend group, we let him come along, but he was loud, annoying, far too full of himself, and hit on nearly every woman that came within yelling distance. Julie never stopped calling him Romeo, and he ate it up. To end this chapter, I suppose we should end on a cliffhanger. In unassuming night, myself, Matt, and Ray were at my apartment. Guilty Gear, drinks, and music were the order of events, and we played long into the night until suddenly there was a heavy knock on the door. Police, open up! No, it's not. <laughs> I thought maybe we made the neighbors angry with the loud music, so I told Matt to turn it down, and I went to answer the door. And there entered Crazy Matt, wearing nothing but his boxers, glasses half fallen off his face, stumbling into the entryway like Kramer from Seinfeld as soon as the door began to open. Crazy Matt, Guys, you gotta help me. I'm gonna kill myself. And that's where I'll end it for now. Interesting. I, I didn't think that you could do a cliffhanger just by saying I'm gonna do a cliffhanger now, but there it is. <laughs> no apologies for spelling or grammar mistakes. Own your mistakes. Luca, out. So yes, I guess we end with a dun dun dun. <laughs> Oh my god, it's gonna get so spicy. There's a couple of things in here that, you know, doesn't necessarily paint Luca in the best light. But that's a big reason that I've never gone out of the way to tell, like, stories of myself being beardy. People are often like, when are we gonna get Red X beard stories? And I'm like, yeah, never. <laughs> it's probably never gonna happen. Because I don't want to paint myself like this. Luca did some shitty stuff, you know? Just ignored that short stack after banging her. That was pretty sad. At least treat her like a human being, you know? She shared her body with you. She didn't make a big deal out of it. It seems like you guys could have had, like, a nice friend with benefits thing going on, if that's what you were into, but I don't know. I guess banging makes it awkward every once in a while. 
There's also the uh, dropping of the cigarette out of your mouth and uh, welcoming Tulsa Beard back into the crew. That was a little bit cringe, you know, a little over the top. I don't know if that's necessarily how things unfolded, uh, but I take it with a grain of salt. There's a bit of artistic liberty at play here, and, and I guess that's fine. You know, <laughs> overall, it seems to me Tulsa Beard's just getting kicked around. Like, yeah, he's, he's sort of coon-brained and weird, but we haven't seen that come through in the story as much. There was the whole, like, Romeo thing, but out of two parts, that's really as bad as we've gotten it from Tulsa Beard. So I I'm leaning towards, you know, going to bat for Tulsa Beard here pretty shortly. I guess we'll just have to see how part three goes eventually. Tulsa Beard, part three. Did you bang a leg beard, bro? Hey, that is a great segue into some of the new old merch that we've got on the Teespring. I've got a couple of other things that are going up on the Teespring quite shortly. They probably should be up by the time you see this video. That includes Party Demon, whoa, and Incel Curities. So I guess the big question here is, did you actually do it? We've had such a string of these recently. First Ramtide, then Cop, now Luca. Oh, Luca. <laughs> Uh, freaking subscribe to Red X. Yeah, definitely do do that. I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Howdy. Hello, Reddit readers, guys, gals, and all the colors of our beautiful rainbow. Your humble OP here continuing the tale of Tulsa Beard. So good to see you back, man. I appreciate you. I know we're only two parts into it. I'm waiting for part five to drop, or maybe part four is the end. I'm quite unsure, but I know you're still with us. If you're taking your time, if you're working on part number five, that's absolutely fine, but I do hope it's coming <laughs> because I'm gonna start rolling on Tulsa Beard again. Neither of us were perfect and Tulsa Beard was nice enough, dude, but he just ticked enough beard boxes to warrant his own tail. Yeah, in the last episode, Luca kind of spurned the dude. He doesn't seem all that mean, a little bit, you know, socially inept, but he's not malicious in any type of way, at least not yet. I guess we'll see how it goes in this one. The cast, OP, that's a me, drinks to sleep, not a good person. See, that's the secret. All the good people think that they're not good people, but the people that tell you they're good, they're the people that are actually not good, right? You got that? <laughs> Ray! Cloud Strife with a Supra. Matt, bro dude with an Impreza. Crazy Matt, yeah, he's just a walking STD. <laughs> Doesn't he have a car too? <laughs> uh, I'm sure he does. Tulsa Beard is our beard of the tale. Looked like Jack Black didn't shower for an entire month. That's impressive, honestly. Jack Black looks sort of like a, a, a scuzzy dude to begin with. Not to come at him. I'm sure he smells great, but just the way that he looks, okay? <laughs> Speaks about 30 decibels louder than everyone else. Yeah, that I identify with that too, honestly. <laughs> and introducing Chihuahua Beard, a leg beard, and surprisingly, Tulsa Beard's girlfriend. Looks like Crystal from Squidbillies, Sands the Mullet, loves Chihuahuas. Who actually loves chihuahuas? Those dogs are like little demons. <laughs> you see, petting the dog is one of the most relaxing things you can possibly do. Uh, no, definitely not. They're 100% unbalanced. But then again, I guess, you know, dogs take after their owners and whatnot. Heidi, my eventual girlfriend. Red-headed short stack with a libido stronger than World Breaker Hulk. Good God. I mean, all in all, yeah. Sounds pretty great. If you are truly not a good person, then I'm sure she wouldn't have showed up in your life, right? Anyways, this will be a story with a focus on Tulsa Beard, but it's also a chronicle of my life pre-Lily in Tulsa. As such, Tulsa Beard might not feature in every chapter of this saga, but he will be the focal point of many a chapter. Honestly, I I'm waiting for the point where we don't have a Tulsa beard in the story and how I will react to it. I, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Luca, hey, it's gonna be fine, right? Probably, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Disclaimer, beards are gross and crass and they do gross, crass things. 
If anything beard adjacent makes you squicky, then now might be the time to check out. This episode also depicts some sexual content, so if that bothers you, again, maybe check out for just a little while. We got plenty of other videos if you like. Also, with over a decade between then and now, I obviously won't remember conversations and events verbatim, but I will be telling this story to the best of my ability with the personalities of all involved in TAC with as much memory as I have. With the stage and character set, it's time to begin with chapter three of Tulsa Beard. This installment, Tulsa Beard. Did you bang a leg, Beard Bro? Bro, did you? <laughs> I need you to answer me right now! Tell me true! <laughs> On the last episode of Tulsa Beard, Crazy Matt had burst into my apartment, claiming intent to remove himself from the planet while half naked and clearly not sober. Oh yeah, I do recall that cliffhanger, okay. Crazy Matt, guys, you gotta help me! I'm gonna effing kill myself! He said this with a seriousness that made the proverbial record scratch and dead silence fall on the four of us. Ray, what's wrong, man? Crazy Matt, she won't friggin' leave, dude! <laughs> uh, that probably isn't the uh, proper response. Have you tried having the, the police come and remove her? Or just tell her you're going out for ice cream and then, like, abandon her at the Baskin Robbins, right? <laughs> Uh, race her home and lock the door. And then just pretend she's not knocking for the next three hours. <laughs> and uh, there it was. Crazy Matt had once again gone and dipped his wick in crazy. <laughs> Never do it. He explained that a woman was in his apartment high on various substances and refused to leave his abode after he got done doing the deed. Yeah, you probably don't want to call the police if she's, uh, been imbibing something that's not necessarily legal. I still stick with the abandon her at Baskin Robbins plan. <laughs> 100%. Depending on what she's been consuming, she might be like, bro, that sounds great. Yeah, Baskin Robbins, let's go! <laughs> it gave me flashbacks to what I had done to that poor woman at the gallery. I felt a pit growing in my stomach, but we all agreed to help Matt. I got on the phone to a cab company, this was like way before Uber, etc., and ordered a cab to our complex. Matt and Ray gave Crazy Matt a pair of my pants so he wouldn't be waving his, um, little Matt around while on the trip back to his apartment. Are y'all the same size or is he just walking around with the button undone or whatever? <laughs> be careful with the zipper, bro, you don't want to munch some hairs. <laughs> <laughs> Soon enough, I was following behind them, smoking like a train. We entered Crazy Matt's apartment and opted to send Ray up to conference with the woman who was invading Crazy Matt's home, as he has, to this point, shown no actual interest in the opposite sex. I mean, I guess that's a solid plan, but are you really worried about whoever goes up there, like, sticking it in a chick or something? I don't understand. <laughs> Is the fact that she's naked off-putting to you, perhaps? I'm a little confused by the logic, but okay, raise the pick, that's fine. There was a hushed conversation, some crying, more conversation, and eventually, I heard the honking of a horn outside. I stepped out to find the taxi waiting. I walked out, stuffed a 50 into his hands, and asked him to just wait for a bit. Yeah, okay, that'll buy you 10 minutes. <laughs> After about five minutes, the textbook definition of Manic Pixie Dream Girl would emerge from Crazy Matt's apartment. Yeah, w with emphasis on the Manic. <laughs> also Pixie Dream Girl, but mostly just Manic. One of Matt's shirts on, but otherwise she was clothed properly, and she would climb into the back of the cab, mascara running down her cheeks. Honestly, I, I guess she had some expectations that weren't met or something like that. This is why we need to be open and honest with our conversation. I don't really know how crazy Matt convinced her into the bed. Maybe he was promising something that he didn't plan on delivering, but I don't want to speculate too much. I'll still give him the benefit of the doubt, okay? I wasn't a fan of crazy Matt after this encounter, but I kept it to myself. Oh, so Luca's thinking the same thing. 
This is why he gets called a walking STD, because yeah, he basically is. <laughs> he will say anything just to put it in. The reason I kept it to myself was mainly out of guilt for the parallels between this incident and what I had done at the gallery. I saw a bit of crazy Matt in myself, and I didn't really like that. Yeah, it's always hard to look into the mirror, man. That's why my kids drive me crazy, too, because they're exactly like me. It's horrifying. <laughs> I simply told him he owed me $50 as we passed each other on our way back to our respective apartments. Did you ever get to 50? I need about 350. <laughs> I ain't giving you no 350, you goddamn Loch Ness monster! A few weeks later, Tulsa Beard would show up at my door unannounced. People did that a lot. I had the tendency to ignore phone calls because I was either working or drunk or driving, so people would just kind of show up. Drunk or driving, that's good. Drunk and driving, that's bad. <laughs> uh, but I also don't want people knocking on my door at all hours, just showing up like I got an answer. Close the curtain, turn the lights off, I ain't here. <laughs> I don't feel like interacting socially today, thank you. Tulsa Beard, hey, hey man, you wanna come over to my place for a bit? It strikes me that you've never been to my place, even though I spend a lot of time at yours. Oh no, does he live in a nest? <laughs> Are you headed to a beard nest? This was true, but that's because I was a bit of a homebody. High five. Homebody gang! <laughs> if I wasn't driving, I did opt to spend my time at home. I figured that this would be a nice change of pace, and so I agreed. OP? Yeah, alright man. Wanna call it a sleepover? I'll get a 24 pack and we could drink about it. I'll pack up the PlayStation and we could play some games. Honestly, sounds like the littest sleepover ever, but I don't know if I want to do it at a neckbeard's house. <laughs> No offense, I just have some presumptions about how this is gonna go. I packed up the console though, and some games, loaded my blanket and pillow into the car, and picked up a 24 pack at the local quick stop before heading over to Tulsa Beard's place. It wasn't too far away, maybe like six miles total. He lived on the second story of some nondescript apartment complex. I walked in, and the apartment wasn't clean, but it wasn't dirty either. Oh, that's good. <laughs> there were a few bags of garbage next to the can, but it was clear that they hadn't been there long enough to allow the smell to permeate. Yeah, but why are they sitting there though? Especially when you have guests coming over. That's probably what happened. He did that last minute clean, shoved everything into a garbage bag. I know what's going on here. He lives in a pigsty, but he doesn't want you to think that he lives in a pigsty. And OP echoes my sentiments exactly. <laughs> Uh, I really should start reading ahead a little bit. It looked like he hastily tried to clean up, but just kind of gave up halfway. If I were to describe the smell, I would have to say it was a little musty, with a tinge of B.O. and just the slightest hint of old garbage. Oh yes, everybody loves their own brand. <laughs> it's magic, isn't it? Uh, nothing overpowering, but it was not pleasant either. Tulsa Beard, welcome home, man! What? <laughs> I'm not moving in with you, you understand that, right? He boomed, arms stretched outward as if inviting me to survey his kingdom. It was a two-bedroom apartment with a small galley kitchen and a dining room, decent-sized living room, and two average bedrooms. His bedroom was rather spartan, a full-size bed tucked into a corner, and a computer on a desk adjacent to it. The other bedroom was completely empty. Creepy. He's gonna ask you to move in. <laughs> I unpacked my things, and we got to the business of playing video games. Every round I won, he'd blame the controller or say uh, he was sitting in an uncomfortable position. Or, as the drinking progressed, he'd blame it on the drink, slowing his response. Yeah, whatever, man. Just accept the loss. Like, you can still have fun with a video game while losing. Luca owns the console. You do not. Expect to lose. But eventually, play it enough, you'll get better. And the first time you win, God, that's gonna feel like triumph. 
But don't be a little baby boy and be like, eh, the controller's broken. <laughs> uh, come on. Just take the L. Sometimes it can be fun, I swear. Soon, though, there was a ring at the doorbell. Tulsa Beard stood up quickly and went to answer the door. He threw his arms around whatever was in that doorway and gave it too long of a public sloppy kiss. Oh, God. I, I smell it coming. <laughs> Smells like tuna fish and corn chips is coming down the hall. <laughs> Uh, Tulsa Beard. Hey, OP. Meet Chihuahua Beard. Chihuahua Beard, this is OP. He had a grin on his face as I reached out to shake the hand of this massive woman before me. I mean, I'm not a person to body shame, but it looked like she sweated out like three pounds just climbing the stairs. Morbidly obese? was a very kind way to put it. She put her meaty paw around mine and gave me bedroom eyes immediately. Oh my God, this was all planned. This was all set up from the beginning and I don't know how to feel. Why? Just please say you didn't do it, Luca. Just please tell me that, okay? <laughs> I need this. Don't take it away from me. <laughs> Chihuahua beard. Hey, I've heard so much about you. <laughs> Good to meet you, she said as she pulled me into an unwilling hug. I was to become one with the girth of this woman now. <laughs> she smelled of B.O., body butter, dog crap, and fried chicken. <laughs> uh, what a combo. Two of those things smell pretty nice. Yeah, the other two not so nice. There was no choice in this any longer. Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. There was only me suffocating in what I assumed was the sweaty breast meat of this woman as the hug was pressed into me with the force of a large vice. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to suffocate you to the point that you can't refuse. You just pass out and she'll have her way. God. Oh, oh. I'm not drunk enough for this. I'm going to go home. That's fine. I'll walk six miles. That's nothing. <laughs> I'm just going to leave now. Just as soon as I was sure that this was going to be my life forever, I was released. And with a gasp of fresh air, <gasps> I was free, <laughs> Tulsa Beard. This is my girlfriend. Oh, God. <laughs> Why is your girlfriend using her pheromones on the OP of our story? Hmm, something a little sussy around here. Tulsa Beard said this as if presenting a new sound system that he was super proud of. She smiled. He smiled. I smiled uncomfortably and... Also mildly drunk. OP, nice to meet you, Chihuahua Beard. Now, Tulsa Beard, I believe we have more of your ass to kick, I said, pointing to the pause game on the TV. We returned to gaming, us sitting on the floor now, as Chihuahua Beard's prodigious girth displaced the entirety of the couch. I mean, three people should fit comfortably on a couch. Is this couch actually a love seat? Or is she just that wide? If she is that wide, I don't know how she got up those stairs. I don't know how she got into this house without you cutting the roof off and airlifting her in like a like a grand piano. <laughs> uh, what? The night wore on and the 24 pack was eventually emptied. Chihuahua Beard volunteered to get more, which I happily accepted because hey, booze. <laughs> you know what she's trying to do though, right? She's trying to get you good and lick it up so she can uh, proposition you, as it were. It eventually came out that Tulsa Beard had an active internet connection and not having been on the internet for well over a year by this point, I decided to take the opportunity to log in and poke around. Rachel was incommunicado on Gaia, Lily was online on AIM. My finger hovered over the chat icon, but 
I opted instead to just poke around online for a while and see what I had missed. God damn, dude. I can't even imagine not going online for over a year at this point. There, were, there was like the first nine, ten years of my life that I'd never gone online before. And then once I start, now I can't stop. Now it's over. <laughs> uh, I got to check it at least once a day. Even on a vacation or something. I'm like, what's the, what's the email about? Come on. Give me something. <laughs> I'm not addicted. I can stop whatever I want. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Beer after beer was downed as I sat at the desk in Tulsa Beard's room, so it was not a surprise when my drunk arse stumbled to my feet to go see what they were doing, only to turn around and see that they were both on his bed, testing uh, the load-bearing capability, naked and writhing. Oh, oh, I I'm, I'm just gonna leave then. <laughs> Uh, I gotta go. I've gone blind, but I'll find the door. <laughs> were they, were they banging in front of me? Yes. Yes, they were. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, OP, what? Uh, hey, guys, I'm like, in here, Tulsa Beard. Oh, we know. Wanna join? Oh, hell no! Oh. 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 <laughs> uh, that's it. The atomic disintegration of my spine. Usually it's just powdered. Now, now I can't even find the molecules. <laughs> it just shot out like a railgun, like a like a particle collider. <laughs> uh. Oh, God! Now, here, dear readers, is where I invite you again to check out. <laughs> uh, if only I could. We've come this far. I just gotta grin and bear it. Mr. Red X, if you've made it this far, I apologize for the words about to fall out of your mouth. I was drunk. Very drunk. Ugh, not that drunk. Come on, man. You can't do this to me. <laughs> and it had been months since I had had any physical encounter. And this is the moment where I tell you, dear readers, that I am bisexual. I laugh. They blow me, Tulsa Beard. Tulsa Beard. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. <sighs> Oh no, you didn't just bang it like beard. You, you took it to the next level. Two beards at the same time. Oh, Luca, why? <laughs> uh, I can't, I, I, uh, my body's rejecting this. My brain cannot process what's happening. God, truly is this a case of any port in the storm, but Come on! <laughs> really? All right, well, we'll do a, a tasteful fade to black here. Thank God. <laughs> but to make a long story short, and to save the stomachs of the eyeballs that have made it this far, yeah, I did bang a leg beard, bro. And also a neck beard. Yeah, and also at the same time. <laughs> I mean... I guess, if you had a good time, who am I to judge, really? But they both seem super gross, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know. All I will say further is, uh, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. I, I don't remember the specifics of that night, but I do remember waking up on the couch with a deep sense of remorse mixed with a heavy hangover. Yeah, there you go. See, that's what you should have been feeling this whole time. <laughs> the beer was just uh, suppressing your finer sensibilities. But I don't know. Who hadn't been there before, I guess? Doing a bad thing, waking up with a complete sense of worthlessness. I mean, mine wasn't a one-night stand. It was uh, taking a tab of X, but... <laughs> I, I get your point in, in some type of way. So then OP uh, threw up, and he threw up a lot. <laughs> 
Was it just the hangover? Or was it the reality that I had just banged out two beards? I remember performing the Eiffel Tower. Oh God. <laughs> they were both still sleeping their drunken slumber in his room. I quickly gathered up all my stuff, went home and took a way too hot, way too long shower. Yeah, but you can't scrub the things out of your mind. <laughs> I scrubbed and scrubbed, but I could swear that after I was done, I still smelled like Chihuahua beard. Yeah, those pheromones, bro, they powerful, I guess. <laughs> this would be the moment that I swore off ever banging it out while under the influence ever again. I should have gone to therapy. I should have gone to AA. I should have sworn off for the rest of my life and just become a Tibetan monk. I mean, that seems a little far, but you, you do what you gotta do, I suppose. <laughs> I should have realized that this was a wake-up call for the kind of loose life that I was living. Looking back, yeah, I was a goddamn mess. I'd let the electric in my apartment get turned off for non-payment more than once because I'd rather spend the money on car parts. Oh, that's not a good way to go. But then again, I guess if you don't have internet, it's, it's really not a big deal. What am I missing out on, TV? <laughs> <laughs> I would basically lay with, biblically, anything that gave me bedroom eyes, and I didn't really care about who I was hurting and the irresponsibility that I was displaying on the daily. All I cared about was cruising and booze and physical intimacy and my car and who I am today would kick the living crap out of who I was as ass. I was as much of a beard as Tulsa Beard and maybe even more so. Yeah, I smelled good. Yeah, I was a decent looking guy. Yeah, I had a job. But as someone wise once said, it's the beard on the inside that counts. Did you just call me wise? I stole that phrase, just so you know. <laughs> I digress, however. <laughs> what did I do instead? Decide that I was desperate and I needed a girlfriend, and so I got one. And I really hope that girlfriend was not another chihuahua beard. Unfortunately, I also see what's coming with this. You're looking for another person to fill the hole in your heart, but the only way that you can fill the hole in your heart is by working on yourself, being committed to your own betterment. So yes, it will feel good for a while, but I don't think it's gonna work out at the end of the day, unfortunately. My supervisor at work had been showing a lot of interest in me. Oh my God. <laughs> You're dating where you work? It's called where you eat, my friend. <laughs> Uh, do not do it. And I eventually started returning those interests. This wasn't an onus simply because I had banged a leg beard and wanted to prevent myself from making that mistake in the future. I had a genuine need for companionship. I have a mighty need! She was conventionally attractive, if a little chubby, and sported a mane of curly red hair. If I had to compare her to someone, I suppose I'd say imagine the stereotypical beer wench from fantasy novels. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it. And I respect your need for companionship, but at this point I would say that you need to work more on yourself. Then again, I'm sure you both learned something out of this meeting, so maybe it is all happening as it's meant to happen. What do I know? <laughs> she was lovely. A cheerful attitude and always DTF. I mean, the red hair could have told you that much, honestly. <laughs> I mean, always. I would later learn that this was a mild form of nymphomania, and this is also what those of us in the writing world would call foreshadowing. Oh, yeah. What goes around comes around or something like that. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. However, I was happy as a clam. She was actually very responsible. She owned her own home at the age of 24 and was well on her way to paying it off. How's that work? <laughs> she was a preacher's daughter and we would go out pretty frequently. Oh, preacher's daughter. 
That <laughs> solves everything. Why is it always the preacher's daughter who's like the freakiest chick in town? <laughs> uh, I I'm not big on stereotyping, but that one, yeah. I've seen it in action. <laughs> I obviously change shifts at my job via a promotion in order to be out from under her direct supervision before going public with our relationship. Yeah, I suppose that's a wise move. I had been avoiding Tulsa Beard since uh, what we will call the incident. <laughs> uh, yeah, seemed like a good idea at the time. But anytime he tried to bring up our little soiree, I would immediately say I was so drunk that I didn't remember anything beyond Chihuahua Beard showing up and I would squash the conversation. Wise, quite wise, because he's going to ask for round two. Tulsa Beard tried to do this quite frequently in front of people, in front of friends. Oh no, this, no. <laughs> Not okay. Yes, I did it, but I regret my actions. Can't you let me just hang my head in shame all by myself? He would smile that beaming grin every time he brought it up. He had power over me now, and he knew it. All he would have to do is threaten to let slip my little infidelity of conscience and I would be the laughing stock of my friend group. He knew that I did in fact remember and the time would come that he would use that against me. He could not wait very long to strike. Okay, now the ultimate beardiness is coming out, but yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, you, you chose this. <laughs> How bad can I feel for somebody that's punching themselves in the face? Good Lord. One day, months later, he showed up at my door. Ray was at work and I was alone. Tulsa Beard. Hey, man, I got a question for you. And I kind of need some help. OP, uh, what's up? You want a drink? I motioned him inside and offered him a soda. Tulsa Beard. Well, my uncle kind of cut me off. And Chihuahua Beard gets some money from disability, but we can't afford the apartment we have now unless we get a roommate. God, I called it 100%. I knew when I saw the empty room. See, that was foreshadowing. Didn't even need to point that one out. And then I feel like I figured out a great mystery. And really, yeah, <laughs> we all saw it coming, I guess. And of course, OP knows where he's going at this point and immediately declines. No thanks, Tulsa Beard. I'm happy in my apartment, and Heidi and I are doing pretty well. I might move in with her soon, Tulsa Beard. Oh, but you want to move in with me. We wouldn't want our little fun night to become common knowledge, uh, would ya? OP, I don't know what you're talking about, Tulsa Beard. I was way too drunk that night to remember anything. I mean, it seems like a good defense, but... At a certain point, you gotta go on the offense, all right? Go dig up some dirt on Tulsa Beard. Fight fire with fire! These blackmail stories are always really intriguing to me, honestly. Not a good situation to be in, but it's always fun when OP finally figures out what they can use to leverage their way out. Tulsa Beard? Oh, I think you remember all right. I see you remembering every time you look at me. Now you can move in with me and help us pay rent. Or I can tell everybody what you did. It's up to you. Oh, Tulsa Beard, I don't like you no more. <laughs> You're a bad, bad man. I should have told him to go screw. I should have told him to tell whoever he wanted. Frankly, looking back at my friends, we would laugh about it for a while, but they let me off after a bit. I should have beat the living hell out of him, but instead I sighed, grabbed my own arm in dejected defeat, and asked, when do you need someone by? Tulsa Beard? You can finish your lease here. My uncle will give me that long, but after that, we're rubies. He clapped me on the shoulder, still smiling at me. Where did he find this spine? He must have traded it for mine. And that is where we will end it for today. It's out there now, I guess, in all of its ugliness. 
Next time will be the finale of Tulsa Beard. Oh my God, the, the final battle. <laughs> so juicy, so delicious. No apologies for spelling or grammar mistakes. Own your mistakes, Luca, out. Honestly, I, I did know that it couldn't be that long before the mask came off. Tulsa Beard, neckbeards in general, are never what they seem. They're just waiting for their moment to strike. And he set up this trap, not even an elaborate trap, <laughs> and just, just used it to his own advantage, and he's not going to stop. You think being roommates with him is going to make him stop using this? No, he's going to play this card every chance that he gets, so I hope that you find a way to flip it around on him. I hope the finale ends with Tulsa Beard in severe pain. Uh, physically preferably, but I I'll take mentally. That's fine as well. But at the end of the day, I do have faith that Luca will figure out a way to turn this all around. It's gonna be fine. He he he's a he's a lovely young gentleman now. <laughs> if you should like to come see him in the Discord. But yeah, we all had our struggles, I'm sure. That's what brought us here, and that's what brings us together. So thank you for hanging out with me today, friends. Tulsa Beard Part 4, the one without a title. I mean, after the despicable acts that occurred in Tulsa Beard Part Number 3, I just don't know. I just don't know if we can bestow a title on this one. I think that's the right thing to do. It's untitleable, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, uh, freaking subscribe to Red X! Oh, there you go. See, Luca was a race car. That's how you bring it back around. Just a shameless plug for me. Aw. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hello, Reddit. Hello, Red X. Hey there, friend. I really didn't like writing the last part, and I doubt that I'll enjoy this entry either, but... Like a band-aid on a mostly healed wound, it has to be removed. Is this a wound that is healed for you? Oh, how nice. It hasn't quite healed for me. <laughs> but it is what it is. Let's get it wrapped. Rip that thing off. I won't waste yours or our readers or viewers time with any BS this time around. So I'll get right into this red exclusive and you're using the branding. Mwah, you love it. <laughs> Very short cast list. OP is me. Tulsa Beard TB, guy from the title. Chihuahua Beard CB, the guy from the title's girl. Matt is a bro dude. Heidi is my girlfriend and crazy Matt. Well, he's just sort of a junkie. <laughs> all right all right very succinct thank you so much for that i kind of like a cast list that short honestly if we could all do cast lists like that well i'd probably have something to say about it i'd be like i got a little question still op why did you do it so short but yeah after part four we get it we get it at this point so we could just jump into the story where last we left off i had been roped into being tulsa beard's roommate because I had made the drunken mistake of having a beardly menage a trois with him and his girlfriend, and he used that as blackmail when his rich uncle cut him off. Yeah, and you think it's it, it's just gonna be, you have to rent this room, but when you give a mouse a cookie, or a baguette, I guess, in this case, <laughs> uh, he's gonna ask for some milk, or, well, you know what I mean by milk, right? <laughs> it's gonna be a beardly three-way every night over at Tulsa Beard's house, but apparently Luca can't have it like that. So I'm rooting for some fireworks this episode. Rather than get a job of his own, Tulsa Beard decided that he would charge me rent and live off of his girlfriend's disability. Oh my god, this is a mess. <laughs> Uh, how does he afford like a car and all this stuff out of disability these are my taxpayer dollars at waste thank you so much looking back yeah i should have grown a spine and told him to go screw or just beat his head in or did anything but agree to live with him and his amorphous mass of human flesh that he called a girlfriend <laughs> I mean, you begged her, bro. What do you? <laughs> uh, I don't know how much shade you can really throw in this situation. <laughs> but then again, as we learn in this and future installments, 
I have the backbone of an 85 year old woman rife with osteoporosis who just agreed to a football game with college sophomores and the opposing team has been juicing. Reed leveled. Yes, a horizontal backbone crushed to dust and not in the fun way. <laughs> I was afraid of being outed to my friends as not only a bisexual, but one that would be willing to have a little fun with Tulsa Beard, of all people. I mean, the orientation shouldn't really come into play, although I guess this was like a few decades back. Things like that weren't judged as kindly back then. But I think they all could have accepted it. The one part that they could not accept is that you chose to do this with a beard. So, I agreed. I didn't want to agree, but I did. I told Heidi, and I justified it by saying I'd be saving money, which wasn't untrue, but I left out that I didn't have any other choice. She was happy for me, but a little disappointment was clear in her brilliant Viridian eyes when I told her that rather than ask to live together, I opted instead to shack up with Tulsa Beard. Yeah, that's not the right choice. Maybe you should have Heidi move into the beard nest with you. And then you can, guys can have a contest through the wall to see who bangs louder or something like that. That could be fun for an extended period of time until you both go insane. <laughs> We'd only been dating for a few months by this point, but it was clear that she wanted the relationship to hold down the fast forward button until we were 50 and had like six carpet sharks. Carpet sharks? I guess that's like babies crawling around or something like that. Or you're gonna get like six wiener dogs to run around. <laughs> Either one, that's fine. I'm easy. And yeah, most people might be like, eh, a few months is too quick to move in, but I say whatever. If it feels right, go for it. I only knew my wife for six months, and then we moved in together, and now we've been together for six years. So yeah, <laughs> don't judge a book by its cover. Your life might have taken quite a different path, although, uh, as it is, Luca at this stage in his life, he's not really ready to be there for another person, from what I could tell. Going out, getting drunk all day, uh, having three waves with, with neck beards and leg beards. <laughs> I don't know. It's all speculation, I guess. So it was around this time that my drinking accelerated. You'd think that what happened would make me reevaluate my imbibing preferences, and it certainly had. If I drank enough, it made the growing pit of despair of my gut fuzzy enough that I could pat it gently for a while in contented blank bliss. Yeah, feeling things is hard. I'm not gonna do that no more. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did go through a period like this as well in my early 20s in the Navy. So I, I live in a glass house. I can't really throw stones. I get where you're coming from. I only drank at night. One, because as mentioned in previous tales, I had a heretofore undiagnosed sleep disorder that I was using alcohol to self-medicate for. And two, because alone at night was when the dark thoughts happened and the beer fairy made them all go away. <laughs> <laughs> Save me from myself. The beer fairy honestly seems really nice when you first meet her and then a couple decades down the road when you've got a liver like a rock and a beer gut like a elephant seal, then <laughs> you might also reevaluate that choice. But in the moment, yeah, sounds great on paper. I was self-destructing. I didn't know it at the time, but yeah, I was. I had a few months of freedom before I had to move in with Tulsa Beard, so I went cruising every weekend with Matt, Crazy Matt, and Ray. I think Ray got left out of the cast list, but yeah, we know who he is, it's fine. <laughs> we went to the gallery, we raced, we generally acted like young, stupid adults with just enough disposable income to be complete idiots. Again, Navy flashback for myself. <laughs> we got banned from bars, had more than one street fight because Crazy Matt had a drunk mouth like Mike Tyson, but a drunk jaw like Glass Joe. Yo, remember Glass Joe from Punch Out? He lost 99 fights, but he won one of them. So, which is the fight that Crazy Matt won? <laughs> uh, I guess it doesn't matter. The real takeaway here is that he got knocked out a lot. Maybe that's why he's so crazy, just a touch of brain damage. <laughs> 
<laughs> One evening, the usual crew, minus Tulsa Beard, were screwing around on some back roads after a light rain, and Crazy Matt decided to show us all his sick drifting skills! Oh, oh yeah, Tokyo Drift! <laughs> Crazy Matt, get in there, P. I need your weight to balance out the front end. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now that that is probably a terrible idea. <laughs> get in my car <laughs> so I can show you my sick drifting skills. Yeah, I think you perfect the drifting first and then... No, I'm still probably not gonna get in. <laughs> so, uh, OP doesn't ask any of those questions. In the car, he climbs and off Matt tears around the corner before yanking the e-brake like he was pull starting a lawnmower that hadn't ran in four years. And then we were sideways. And then we felt a curb. <laughs> and then we stopped. Yep, I'm flying through the air. This is not good. Well, well I'm grateful for that part. You probably could have rolled and like pulled a, a full on Paul Walker. <laughs> that would be rather unfortunate. I know some people probably feel s salty about the, the turn of phrase there, but look, it's been long enough, okay? It's fine. It's official. I called it. He was a nice guy, but <laughs> this analogy is just too perfect. Crazy Matt climbed out, panicked, of course. Me trying to stifle my laughter. He had curbed so hard that his front left tire had completely buckled under his car, and much of the bodywork on the left side was scratched or dented to hell. Jesus, dude. <laughs> Honestly, you should feel lucky at this point. You made a stupid decision, and now you just kind of got to hold the L. Be grateful that you didn't roll the entire mess, right? Oh, oh, and, and Crazy Matt also managed to take down a street sign in the process. Well, I think the rule on that is you got to take it home now. <laughs> That's how that works. Seeing as we were all under the influence to some degree, and this was bound to attract Johnny Law, we all did the right thing and stayed by our friend in need until the tow truck came. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> uh, we bailed, but not before making sure that the tow truck was indeed on the way. Well, I guess half credit. <laughs> I wouldn't have stuck around either, honestly. Crazy Matt's going away. We're, we're not going to see him around for a little while. <laughs> uh, and OP says as much. I didn't see Crazy Matt for a few days after that. But when I did, he was driving a shiny new S2000 and somehow convinced the tow truck driver that he wasn't drunk or... Maybe just bribed him enough to not say anything. And daddy used the insurance payoff plus a little extra to buy his special boy a new special toy. Well, see, that's why he's an idiot. He's just been rewarded for bad behavior. It's the same thing that happens with Chris Trucker. It gets to a certain point where you need to enforce some boundaries or you're going to end up with neck bearded children. All right. What a terrifying thought. <laughs> Now, here is where I'm going to say goodbye to some of our characters because their stories end here. At least from my perspective, they do. Everyone is living a story and every story is valid and has merit, but sadly, they are no longer a part of mine. And that's perfectly okay, Luca. Sometimes people come into your life for just a little while. Doesn't mean they got to stay there forever. Some people, they just teach you a lesson and they go. Like most of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> uh, really f***ing hard lessons. <laughs> to be honest, after that day, I don't think I ever saw a Crazy Man again, so we'll bid him adieu for my life. However, according to regular Matt, normal Matt, <laughs> just Matt, he eventually cleaned up his act and even got married. Works as some high-powered investment banker or something, something nepotism. So yeah, we could probably safely assume still a scumbag, though not one that will be indicted for anything anytime soon. <laughs> so, uh, fare thee well, Crazy Matt. I saw your dong far too many times in mixed company, and you still owe me 50 bucks. 
I don't know if 50 bucks is enough to go chase him down, but yeah, perhaps he'll see this video. I don't think he'll come forward and give you the 50 bucks, but just let that rest on his conscience, how about? A few weeks later, Ray announced that he had found a girlfriend, which honestly shocked both myself and Matt. We were both convinced that he was gay or simply asexual. However, as his attentions were now almost entirely focused on his new paramour, we hung out less and less until eventually I never saw him again either, though he lasted well into my time with Lily. That is interesting. Ray, it seems like he just knew exactly what he wanted. And once he found what he wanted, he jumped in with both feet. It's not unheard of. Last I heard, again from Matt, He's married to that girl now and has a few kids and is a dedicated family man. I'm proud of the guy, but I do miss the friendship that we shared. Yeah, and it's really hard to ignite those sorts of things when you're a bit later on in life, isn't it? I would say reach out, but I, I don't know that it would go anywhere. Like I said, some people, yeah, they're only there for a short time. So just value the time that you had with them is the lesson of that story. Now, about this point is where I expect Red to be wondering where the beard part of my beard story is. I mean, I'm not eager to get back to that, honestly. <laughs> Last time we got into it with Tulsa Beard, something terrible happened. Something I can't ever unsee, so a little bit of a break from him is a welcome reprieve, if I'm being quite honest about it. Like a lump of dough, slowly rising for a batch of bread, hastily made minutes before disaffected in-laws arrive at your doorstep for yet another, don't talk about politics at the dinner table, please, dad, Thanksgiving. Awful things take time. And framing. Yeah, both of those things. Time and framing. That's how you grow tomato plants, isn't it? <laughs> or grapes. <laughs> other vine bearing fruits and vegetables so yeah my simile kind of falls apart there but ah, hold your horses i'm getting to it oh we don't have to get to it if you don't want to that's fine we just do that on another day <laughs> no but i am eager to hear about the fireworks thank you to put it in the kindest way possible i was just sort of hoping that i would die before i had to move in with tulsa beard Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, that'll fix it, too, I guess. Although it is a very permanent solution for a very temporary problem. I'm very glad that you didn't take it that way, Luca. And I did live that way. I was reckless. I was an idiot. I got a lot of young and stupid out while I was still, thankfully, fairly young and quite stupid. As the day approached and Matt agreed to help me move my rather spartan apartment trappings to Tulsa Beard's spare bedroom, fate is something that cannot be avoided. I mean, what's happened in this story is already quite fateful, but um, hopefully fate is going to save you from this situation and not drop you into something worse, right? Right? <laughs> Finally, the day had arrived. I dropped my old keys into the rent slot of my old apartment and waved a sad goodbye to a security deposit that I would never get back. Yeah, been there too. <laughs> As we ascended the steps of Tulsa Beard's complex stairs to load our first things in, what hit us first was the smell. It smelled like dog poop, and our suspicions were confirmed as the door was flung open and the wave of it hit us. Oh no, it wasn't like this last time. Why this? <laughs> it almost had like a sort of heat to it. Oh, <laughs> wafting into my nasal cavity was the gentle aroma of Chihuahua Dookie, which if you didn't know, Chihuahua Duke is the worst of the dog dukes. I don't know how their little bodies can press pure hatred into little turd nuggets and equal amount brown spray. But yeah, I say again, Chihuahua Duke is vile honestly most little dogs it also depends what you feed them we used to feed my dogs like rice and fish and stuff and the poop was just the nastiest then we got them on like actual dog food and it was still nasty but not as nasty and then yeah the the smaller the dog the worse their poop smells we we got that little beagle a few months ago god she just pooping all over the place you know instantly when she drops the deuce because it's just like eh. 
It comes through the windows, man. The windows closed. I don't know how that works. Ah, <laughs> uh, there was garbage piled at least a foot high on every surface. So mixed in with the aroma of dog dew was rotting garbage and body odor. Uh, it seemed that Tulsa Beard had truly nested. I guess it wasn't like this last time because he was trying to convince somebody to move in with him. And then once he got somebody to blackmail, he's like, okay, we don't have to put on airs anymore, right? Now you're just letting it all hang out. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> Matt shot me a, are you sure about this look while trying not to gag? To which I replied with an, I'm in too far now, reply, look. We dropped my headboard and leaned against the railing. Carefully, we cleared a path from the living room to my room and shoved the door to my room open, plowing the garbage and excrement out of the way as we did so. Yeah, I guess this isn't just contained to one room in the house, is it? Why would Tulsa Beard be a goodly enough person to be like, oh, don't go in that room and throw a bunch of trash or dog poop. Luke is gonna come live in there next week. Nah, he's like, whatever. Luke will clean it. And then in the next sentence, I have to take all that back because surprisingly, my room was left alone. Honestly, I am shocked. Maybe Tulsa Beard, like, I, I didn't get a horrible vibe off him in the first couple of parts. But yeah, deep down, I guess he is sort of human. Supremely lazy, but <laughs> that's still human too, I guess. There was no trash in there. No dog poo, just... The smell. Tulsa Beard, of course, was there. Happy as a clam to have a ruby. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> but he could tell that I was in no mood for his BS. So he offered neither words nor help. Yep, there he goes again. Lazy, but at least he's not the worst ever. <laughs> as far as beards go, he's, he's one of the better ones that we've had, I guess. He could have been redeemable before the whole blackmail bit. I don't know. I'm torn. Instead, Tulsa Beard and Chihuahua Beard sat together on the couch watching TV. Together, meaning he got to sit on the arm of the couch while Chihuahua Beard lounged on it like a parody of the French girl painting. Paint me like one of your French girls! No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to commit this to memory. Why would I commit it to canvas? Matt, being the absolute bro he was, helped with loading the heaviest of things into my room before, as he put it, if I stay here a second longer, I'm kicking his teeth in, heaving, calling the cops for animal abuse, or, or maybe just all three. Honestly, you'd be doing me a favor. Let's have at him, Matt. But... He left, and with the business of actually moving over, I set about making my room my own, with a window open, of course. An open window I actually learned was a bad idea, as it drew the stench from the rest of the apartment into my space. Oh, God, there's no winning! <laughs> when I tell you that this was a beard nest, I say it with the honesty that would get it onto an episode of Hoarders today. The garbage bags I had seen during my first visit were still there. It had been four months from that day. <laughs> I think my theory does stand up though. He was trying to play nicey nice until he knew he got the roommate and he's like, ah, now I don't have to do anything ever again. <laughs> That's not how it works, dude. Apartment maintenance is a necessity. You could tell that they eventually just eschewed trash bags altogether, instead opting to just throw their garbage wherever it may lay. I gingerly made my way to the sink, where what awaited me was a sink stacked high, so high, full of dishes that it almost defied physics. I'm convinced that there was some sort of bacterial glue holding this structure together. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and of course, it was sitting in a pool of pitch black liquid on both sides. Oh, God, dude. Uh, how do you let this happen? Ah, uh, 
The stove was piled high with discarded dishes and cardboard TV dinner packaging. The only clean spot in the kitchen was a George Foreman grill with a drip tray that hadn't been emptied since the device was invented, and the microwave, which, while accessible, was crusted with the splashback of a thousand bowls of Dintymore beef stew. God, this is horrible. You live like this? Okay, we're both going in. Half half on a maid, all right? <laughs> I can't I can't do this. You can tell my friends whatever you need to tell them, but I can't do this. I'm gonna go live with my lady love. This is not the way I wanted things to go. Hi, OP. Welcome to hell. Ah, <laughs> uh, Tulsa Beard greeted me, and I huffed one back and told him that this place was freaking disgusting. Tulsa Beard. Oh, I know, man. I want to clean, but with Chihuahua Beard's disability, it's hard to do it frequently. <sighs> I'm not sure if being boneless Peter Griffin was a disability, but I dismissed that thought. <laughs> uh, this is the same excuse that Miss Piggy would dole out. That's a throwback on the channel. Y'all remember that? Oh, I just got back problems and such and such and everything's so hard for me. Then hire somebody. I got no sympathy for you. H how do you live like this? OP, well, uh, thanks for at least making sure that this stayed out of my room. Tulsa Beard beamed that big smile of his and said, uh, of course, man, and that space was yours since you accepted my offer. <laughs> I wouldn't put anything there. Honestly, like I said, I I'm shocked by that. He's still not fully human, but at least he's closer than the majority of beards that we see on this channel would be, right? Maybe I'm giving him too much credit. Maybe the comment section will let me know. I suppose I should have been thankful for that at least, and I was permitted to move in without clearing a few dumpsters of refuse from my space. What did I bring with me, you might ask? Well, my queen bed, small nightstand, desk, TV stand, small TV, and a computer. I finally got one via rent to own. A eh, bad financial decision, I know. <laughs> yeah, you gotta buy those things outright. Even if you're only buying the parts outright. I think that's that's probably the way to go. Just save up a few months for that graphics card. <laughs> I think prices on graphics cards are dropping now. Anyways. I knew Tulsa Beard had internet, so I figured I could entertain myself online while I drank myself to sleep, which I did quite frequently. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I don't quite drink myself to sleep, but being online, that is a great sedative. I justify it because it helps me pay my bills, but I, I still use it way more often than I should probably. Anyway, throughout all of this, the self-destructive behavior, the heavy drinking, the slow dissolution of our crew, Heidi was there. She was like a small rock of normality in an entire sea of what the f***ery. She had even made it her mission to visit me at Tulsa Beard's place frequently. Oh my god, she is braving the horrors of a beard nest for you? Luca! Put a ring on it. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. I took to smoking in my room. At least the smell of cigarette smoke would overpower whatever was trying to waft in from the rest of the apartment. And I got a door sweeper and some weather stripping to try and seal out the smell as best I could. Yeah, shove a blanket under the door or something. Then then you, just your blanket stinks, I guess. <laughs> Combine all that with liberal amounts of Glade plugins, and this space was almost livable if you discounted the actual dump that was just outside my bedroom door. Uh, thank goodness I had my own bathroom attached to my bedroom. Yeah, in this case, just weld the door completely shut, throw a ladder off the balcony, little rope ladder, everything's gonna be fine. You never have to interact with them. Just slide a rent check under the door or something. <laughs> Whatever's happening in the rest of the house, I don't want to know about it. I spent months living here. At this point, my spirit was all but broken. I worked, picked up an eight pack of tall boys on my way home, made my way to my room, and played WoW on 15 frames per second on my awful PC 
until I was drunk enough to go to bed. I didn't cruise anymore. I didn't hang out with Matt unless he came over, which was rare, but I didn't really do much of anything except wallow in my own depression. I mean, 15 frames per second would make me depressed too, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke that's a joke i understand what you're going through i'm sorry you had to go through it but eventually you saw the light you came out the other end stronger for it and i'm proud of you luca however i was determined to keep my little corner of hell clean so i was fastidious in making sure that it was nice i mean sure the occasional piece of clothing or the full ashtray was had for a day too long or so but i resolved never to nest like they had. Like I said, you go through life, you learn lessons. One day, as Heidi and I were having pillow talk in my room, she asked, I, I, I gotta say again, I still can't believe that she's over here. She is such a trooper, bro. How did this end between you and her? After all this, you know she's ride or die. <laughs> Heidi said, I hate to say it, OP, but your friend is living in literal squalor. Your room is the only place in this apartment where I can even see the floor, and I have to dodge dog turds coming in here. Why do you stay? OP, I made a promise, Heidi. I told him I'd live with him because he was out of work and his girlfriend's disability doesn't cover all the rent. Heidi, well, it's been months. Hasn't he found anything? I sighed. <sighs> no. And he's not looking either, Heidi. Well, why not? Well, if there was ever a person to come clean to, it was Heidi. If she didn't accept it, well, come what may. OP, he doesn't have to. He's... Uh, he's blackmailing me to live here. Heidi was shocked. Blackmailing you? She leaned in to whisper. What? What did you do? I sighed. I, I had sex with him and his girlfriend. She leaned back and I saw her shoulders drop. So I clarified this was before you and never since then. I've been loyal to you. She perked up a bit, but cocked an eyebrow. So you did Tulsa beard? You're bi? She gave me a cocky smile. Yeah, well, might as well come out with it. I replied. She laughed. That's kind of hot, but not with Tulsa beard. Ew. <laughs> uh, yes, I know. All right. I just, I, I got a little bit drunk. What do you want from me? And really, since you don't have friends besides Heidi at this point, and she seems to have accepted you, I just pull the plug on the whole thing. Heidi continues. So you had a three way. So what? That's not really a big deal. She continued, I've had lots of them, OP. I've even taped them. She wasn't lying. She liked to film herself doing it, and she did it a lot. Oh, hey, can I see some of those for research? No, just that's a joke. <laughs> I don't partake in that. She showed me the box once. Hey, <laughs> giggity. <laughs> Uh, it was heavy, physically and emotionally. It's one thing to know and accept that your girlfriend has been banged down before you got to her. I mean, that's really pretty normal. It's another thing to be holding the proof that she has done it dozens, if not hundreds of times before you came around. Honestly, is this what the same person might be a little too much baggage for me? If I was in your shoes, uh, I'm not saying that you shouldn't continue on if that's what you want, but that's definitely not what I would be looking for. Sort of a deal breaker, if I'm being honest. Not to shame, but again, preferences are, are allowed. Surreal. That's a good way to put it. It didn't make me think any less of her. Hell, I banged anyone who wanted me, so I was like the last person to be able to judge. Thankfully, she never filmed her and I. I can barely stand to have my picture taken, much less have my <laughs> on a film for all of eternity. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm 
also not really uh, seeing the appeal. Who wants to see a big hairy full moon? Forget about it, bro. <laughs> you can ask me, I still say no. I couldn't help but laugh a bit. Yeah, but it's Tulsa beard and Chihuahua beard. That is so embarrassing. And then she shattered my world. But is it more embarrassing than living here? Whoa. Heidi's deep, bro. <laughs> no. No, it wasn't. I started crying. Well, to be more accurate, I started sobbing and I buried my head in her chest. I don't want this anymore, Heidi. I want to be with you. I want to live with you. I can't do this anymore. And that's where I'll leave things off for now. You thought this entry was the last? So did I, honestly. But it turns out the end of this tale will have to wait for at least one more chapter. What? <laughs> I lied to everybody in the intro. All right, fine. Fine. We're waiting for it, Luca. Three months down the road. We're still waiting for it. God, I hope it comes soon. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around. No apologies for spelling or grammar mistakes. Own your mistakes. Luca, out. Luca! <laughs> How could you do this to me? I trusted you! <laughs> no, but I do hope the end comes quite soon. I, I swore that this was the end three months ago, and we still ain't got part number five. It's okay. I'm breathing deep. I'm, I'm just going to have to wait. God, I, I really do hope that it shows up sooner than later. I'd like to get this wrapped. I did enjoy seeing uh, a, a bit more of Heidi today. She really seems deep. That one question would also shatter my world. Is the fact that you did it more embarrassing than the fact that you live here? Oh my God, bro. She's wise. She's down to ride. Luca seems okay with her box of self-taken videos. So yeah, I, I don't know why it all fell apart, but I guess some questions remain to be answered. Tulsa Beard Finale, AKA The Ballad of Lily, Part Zero. Oh, that's a little bit of a twofer. And we are getting The Ballad of Lily. Is that confirmed? That's madness. The, the Luca verse, <laughs> the Luca cinematic universe is just growing all the time and I love it. Freaking subscribe to Red X. Hey, I appreciate the plug for reals. Uh, probably most of the people here are already, but if you're not, I mean, there's a button right there. <laughs> hey, Reddit. This will be the last entry in the series of my experience with Tulsa Beard. Unfortunately for me, perhaps not for you, this also necessitates the beginning of my recounting of the Ballad of Lily. Yes. We are finally getting to that. As Red likes to put it, this is the Luca Cinematic Universe. And Lily, well, she is my Thanos. Although I'm certain that I am the villain of her story as well. I mean, you guys can't both be Thanoses. Although if you look at it from a certain angle, I guess Thanos thinks that he's the good guy and, and that Thor is the villain or something. I don't know what's going on. This will be a bit longer than my usual posts, but I will do my best to be concise. Disclaimers and warnings, of course. Beards are gross. If you're this far in, you know what you signed up for. <laughs> That's true. However, if this is your first foray into beardiness, you should know that beards are gross and crass, and they do gross, crass things. If any of that bothers you, now's your time to check out with that out of the way, let's get into the cast list. God, there's so many disclaimers. I don't want to hear anything about uh, fractured spines and whatnot. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably say something about it. Maybe it'll be like a, a happy story, you know? We'll wrap it up with a little bow. You never can tell. <laughs> we got OP. That's me. TB, Tulsa Beard. CB is Tulsa Beard's girl, aka Chihuahua Beard. Heidi is my girl. And introducing Meg, who is Heidi's sister, developmentally disabled but has a heart of gold, lives with Heidi and is just a pure cloud of happiness. Daniel is a work friend from DirecTV, 
We would hang out at Buffalo Wild Wings after work frequently. Yeah, that's what dudes do, right? Come on, dudes. Buffalo Wild Wings, bro. Whoa. <laughs> Edgy goth guy like myself would join us at the gallery more than once, but wasn't relevant to this story until now. And finally, Lily. Yeah, we're here now. Lily was my paramour since high school, dating online in the late 90s and early 2000s. Moved to Memphis in a desperate attempt to be with her until Hurricane Katrina ripped us apart. For more on that, please see Luca's Guide to Unintentional Pimpery, which was a little one-off that we did. It's pretty good. Not red exclusive, but pretty good. <laughs> She's a short, fiery Latina girl with a temper like the Hulk or She-Hulk <laughs> and the patience of, uh, well, someone without patience. Yeah, probably the Hulk again, I guess. <laughs> she was conventionally beautiful, with deep pools of hazel framing a lithe face, long black hair down her back, and a sprightly form. I mean, it sounds nice, but I'm pretty sure that's what the devil looks like. Don't fall for any of that. <laughs> I'm just saying, hindsight's 2020. that's all I know. With the cast out of the way, let's get into this final installment of Tulsa Beard, this episode all's fugged that ends fugged yeah <laughs> we gotta get some fireworks for sure i've been waiting i've been thirsty now it's time to drink it in when last we left off my head was buried in heidi's prodigious bosom sobbing and confessing that i wanted to live with her she cried and held me for a while and all those months of depression and anger the bitterness and budding hatred flowing out of me in choking cries. She was quiet, letting me just let it out. I felt safe in her arms, like everything was finally going to turn around. Ah, it would be nice if that was what happened and we, we got everything all packed in nicely. But unfortunately, people don't generally fix each other. You need to have it in your heart that you want to change and I don't see that in you quite yet in this part of your life, Luca. So I kind of know it's gonna fall apart with Heidi, but it's nice that she was there for you, you know what I mean? After a few minutes, she gently cupped my chin and rose my face to meet her eyes, my cheeks wet and her shirt discolored. Do you mean it? She asked. I, I, I do, I mean it. I wanna live with you, I replied. Let me clarify, she continued. Do you wanna live with me because you want to live with me? Or do you want to live with me because you don't want to live here? Yeah, that's one of those those tricky questions. It's like, do you need me because you love me or you love me because you need me, right? There's only one right answer. <laughs> to be honest, it was a little of both, but I did truly want to live with her. I mean it. I hate living here, yeah, but I always wanted it to be us. And I think that that's the truth. Heidi nodded. Now... I had stayed at Heidi's place more than once during the months together. Hell, I'd spend more than a few days at a time just to get some reprieve from the beard nest that the duo of these beards had lived in, and here is where I'll tell you that because of my sleep disorder, I have a difficult time sleeping with another person in my bed. We discussed it, and a plan was formed. One, since I wasn't on the official lease, I could leave anytime I wanted and I would. Two, I would have my own bedroom in Heidi's home, but on the condition that we sleep together once in a while. I would pay her a modest rent, basically what I'd been giving Tulsa Beard. She said the rent payment would cease once I put a ring on it. Yeah, it doesn't really cease, now just you take care of the whole thing, right? Is that how that works? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. The whole having your own bedroom thing is honestly a lot more convenient than people would think. It's kind of nice to just do your own thing, meet up every once in a while. You don't have to sleep in the same bed, especially if you're uncomfortable with it. It's your life. Live it how you want to. I'll go to bat for you on that one. So with the plan in place, Heidi bid goodbye after giving me a kiss, and I was left to confront Tulsa Beard. Well, that's big of you, honestly. I would just pack my stuff up and left in the middle of the night, but uh, props to you for doing the right thing. 
I waited a few days to gather my thoughts and to make sure that I wouldn't lose my bravery going over the possible conversations in my head. I overthink a lot, and I still do to an extent. I digress. The day of my confrontation was set, and soon it had arrived. One Friday, while they were lounging on the couch, watching TV over the still accumulating pile of refuse, I steeled my resolve and approached the duo. Yeah, here we go. Go ahead, secrets out. Go tell the friends that I don't talk to anymore all that you know about me, Tulsa Beard. <laughs> you have no power here. OP, Tulsa Beard, we, uh, we need to talk. Tulsa Beard, oh, uh, sure, man, what's up? He smiled that beaming smile at me, but knew by my countenance that it was not good news. Chihuahua Beard looked at me as well. OP, um, alone. Chihuahua Beard stood and waddled her way into the bedroom, closing the door before I heard the springs of their bed groan at the mass that had just assaulted it. Yeah, two of them sleeping on that thing together? How old is that mattress? Probably, it, it's dead already. <laughs> springs should not sound like that. OP, um, I'm making this short. I'm moving out two weeks from now. Tulsa Beard's eyes widened, panic slowly setting in. Tulsa Beard, uh, what? But what about our arrangement? OP, you mean you blackmailing me? I'll be honest, I don't even care anymore. Tell whoever you want. Tell Matt, tell Crazy Matt, tell Ray, if they'll even answer your calls. Find Julie and tell her if you can even get to her and tell Heidi too. Matter of fact, I already did. I'm done. You aren't using me anymore. And it looks like you're back on the job hunt, buddy boy. Oh, that's the worst thing for a beard, honestly. Time to find some gainful employment, baby boy. I know that it hurts, <laughs> but the ride's over. Tulsa Beard, but, but, I could see the tears welling up in his unwashed face. We're friends. You can't just leave me out to dry. What about the lease? Yeah, friends always blackmail friends. That's how friendship works, don't you know? <laughs> uh, I tolerated you and now it's over. A and, and I'm leaving, okay? Honestly, be grateful that he did the nice thing and told you to your face. Because like I said, I would have slipped out in the middle of the night. I don't owe you a goddamn thing. OP. We stopped being friends the moment that you blackmailed me. And if you'll recall, I'm not on the lease. I've played nice because I was afraid of the crap that you had on me, but that doesn't even compare to this, I said, spreading my arms, gesturing widely around me. I can't live in this. I can't live with you. Scream it from the mountaintops for all I care. Everything that you know, it doesn't matter. I am gone. Well, see, that's, that was relatively easy, wasn't it? Let's quote Fight Club here, because why not? It's only once you've lost everything that you're free to do anything, right? <laughs> no friends? No problem. <laughs> I'm out here living my best life. I could hear Tulsa Beard begin to protest again, but I refused to listen and returned to my room, donning my headphones and putting on music to drown out the sound of him knocking. Eventually entering my room, talking at me, and leaving. I eventually stopped the music and heard the quiet crying of Tulsa Beard to Chihuahua Beard on the couch outside my room. I couldn't hear much, but Chihuahua Beard sang, We'll figure something out! And that did stick with me. Yeah, that's how life works. You always figure it out. <laughs> What's the alternative? Just lay down? Like, okay, I guess I can't pay the rent anymore. No, you're gonna figure it out. That's what humans do. You'll be fine. You will be fine. If you wanted stability, maybe you shouldn't have uh, blackmailed the person that you decided to be your roommate, right? <laughs> Stupid. The next two weeks went by, Tulsa Beard trying to change my mind and me reminding him that my decision was final. Him threatening to tell people about my impropriety and my telling him to do it. <laughs> Go ahead, do it. You won't. <laughs> it was soon enough 
that I knew he had been bluffing the entire time. He never intended on telling anyone, but he knew that I wouldn't move in unless he exerted some leverage. What a complete bastard. On the one hand, I suppose he had a shred of honor in him for not telling anyone. On the other hand, the threat of it was enough to put me in hell for months. I had long since run out of sympathy and patience for Tulsa Beard. Yeah, you, you've crossed the line, honestly. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me about your honor and all this other crap. If you had the honor, you wouldn't have held this over my head, right? You got no leg to stand on, the way I see it. Matt was once again enlisted to help me move into Heidi's place. God, Matt's a real bro, isn't he? A friend that'll help you move? Good friend. Friend that'll help you move? A dead body? Best friend. <laughs> My belongings fit neatly into a small, rented U-Haul truck. While he was helping, Tulsa Beard approached Matt. Tulsa Beard, Hey, Matt. Long time no see. Thanks for helping OP move. Did he ever tell you why he moved in? All right, moment of truth. Matt, not really. Something about saving money? What's it even matter? Tulsa Beard chuckled and shot me a knowing gaze. He did intend to spill. Tulsa Beard, well, I'll tell you what really happened. Matt, dude, I don't care. <laughs> uh, and it shut down just like that. He told me you and him had a spat and he's moving out. We were never friends. I only hung out with you because OP liked you. Now that's done, and we're done, Tulsa Beard. But, but, but we... <laughs> uh, reality check. I love Matt. Honestly, what a cool dude. Just calls it like he sees it. He don't pull no punches. He's a straight shooter. You got to respect a guy like that. Matt cut Tulsa Beard off. You what? You want to spin another tall tale of you besting him somehow? Tricking him? You want to lie about beating him in a race to move in? I don't want to friggin' hear it. All you've done since I've known you is compare yourself to us and measure yourself better. You're a rude, loud, dirty, lying little goblin, and were it not for OP, I would have leveled you months ago. Matt, I love you. <laughs> He's a G, for real. <laughs> that boy gangster as hell, he don't give a damn. I love it. <laughs> we all need friends like Matt. Tulsa Beard retreated into his room with Chihuahua Beard, him crying again. The facade he thought he had crafted was crumbling around him as I was leaving. I wanted to feel pity for him, but he had begun to reap what he had sown long ago. As we were moving, Matt did ask, So what did he do to convince you to live with him? OP, uh, I don't really want to get into it, but long story short, blackmail. Matt, that slimy dude. Say no more, bro. If you ever want to talk about it, I will listen. I gave him the bro dude hug back slap. OP, I'm glad you're my friend, Matt. <laughs> I love moments like this, man. This makes your heart grow three sizes. Matt, I'm glad you're getting out of this hellhole. And moving in with Heidi, oh, I'd say that's like a huge upgrade. Yeah, Heidi does some things that Tulsa Beard, well, I guess Tulsa Beard would do. <laughs> but but everybody has prefaces, right? I mean, Lord knows I'd prefer a relatively normal human being over a beard of either gender. <laughs> and yeah, Matt was right. Heidi kept a clean home, was responsible, and she loved me. For the sake of brevity, we will fast forward. I moved in, mostly without incident. Meg was happy that I was moving in, calling me Uncle OP, which made me smile. She was well into her 20s, but her disability had stopped her mind from progressing beyond that of a first grader. She was pure-hearted, and honestly one of the kindest people that I ever knew. She knew I was nervous about moving in, somehow, and offered me her favorite teddy bear. Not to keep! Just a hug for a little bit. <laughs> I like how she's very specific about that. But yeah, what a kind gesture, you know? 
I smiled, taking it, giving it a smothering hug and telling her that I felt much better. She took it and bounced back to her room, humming and saying, See? I told you he'd like you before closing her own bedroom door. God, that is adorable, isn't it? And then, in the older sister's room, it's like a adult video palace with all sorts of tapings and stuff going on. Never mind, I'm not gonna get too much into that. <laughs> uh, life with Heidi was simple, slow, and laid back. I like that, honestly. We'd work, come home, watch some TV, fool around a bit, and sleep. She wasn't the geeky type at all, but I even got her playing some WoW with me and my family back in New Mexico and Colorado. We had a guild there, Alliance, called Mercenaries. We never did make it to any end game stuff, but we all had a good time. Yeah, me and the Discord folks play on a private server, also Alliance, and our guild is called Edgemax Deathgrind. <laughs> and we are also not into any end game content. But that's okay, just feels good to kick it together, to build something together. I get it. Heidi liked to cook for me, which, while I appreciated, Gordon Ramsay, she was not. Oh, come on, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Her favorite meal was plain ground beef with ketchup in a tortilla. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can... Mm. While I do appreciate the effort, I'm gonna go like shred some lettuce or do something. I can't, I can't do this. Hit me with the ground beef, but no ketchup. Thank you. I'll figure the rest out. <laughs> Rather, this was really Meg's favorite food, but Heidi insisted that it was hers too, as to not pull on Meg's tender heartstrings. But I ate a lot of it myself. I cooked for her as well, and those nights, Meg was not happy. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I could I could do it, man. Meg's super nice, you know, but I'm not having somebody with the mind of a first grader dictate what we eat in this house, all right? Maybe I'll cook a separate meal. Maybe. <laughs> but really, I'd like it if you just tried the mushrooms or whatever the hell. You think I want to eat chicken tendies every night? Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't because I'm getting up there in age. You just can't do that anymore. <laughs> Meg loved her beefy tomato wrap, but picked at the meals that I cooked for her in an attempt to make me happy. <sighs> God bless you, Meg. You are too innocent for this world. I mean, how hard is it to make beefy tomato wrap? Make two meals? It's not that difficult, honestly. <laughs> I would do it just to avoid the conflict. You can't force her to eat something she don't want to eat. So yeah, pan fry some ground beef, squirt some ketchup in there, throw it in the tortilla. Boom. Three steps. Easy meal. <laughs> you want to eat this for the rest of your life? Fine. I'll learn how to cook it with my eyes closed, I guess. Now, Heidi has a libido like a Ferrari. See, see, this is where I found it a little bit weird because you got like the developmentally disabled sister, and then you got the older sister who's like banging all the time, and it's probably not great. <laughs> her libido was always revving, and I struggled to keep her satisfied. As I had told you in a previous installation of this tale, I would learn that this was a mild form of nymphomania. Soon, I would begin declining sexy time with her, and begrudgingly, she would accept, but that wouldn't stop her from trying every single day. That just means she likes you. I mean, as long as she's not banging you raw or anything like that, you could get into it. <laughs> just make her do some weird stuff that you're into. You don't have to tell me what it is. <laughs> but uh, that's dedication, honestly. You can't, you can't reject a woman too many times. See, it's gonna break apart the relationship. She's gonna be like, you don't find me attractive, etc., etc. Even if you're not 100% into it, just, just go ahead. <laughs> do what you do, all right? Tell her to hop on top, whatever. Heidi would don frilly things and entice me in various ways, but as the time passed, my interest in her waned in a carnal way. Oh, that, oh I hate to see that, man. <laughs> it is, in fact, possible to have too much of a good thing, and while the mind was willing, the body was not. 
you can make the body willing. <laughs> Trust me, bro. All else fails. Maybe you buy some like little blue pills and just let her have her way. It's gonna be fine. But yeah, I guess if you're not compatible, you're not compatible. You know, you, you don't medicate because you're not compatible. You just kind of go, okay, this isn't working out in the way that I would like it to. Eh, and that's rough, I guess. Uh, but OP changed jobs, quit DirecTV, started working for MetLife as some dental insurance goon. <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but the pay was generous. And DirecTV has a strict no cohabitation policy. Stupid. <laughs> some BS about leaving home at home and work at work. Exceptions only for married couples, and even then, only in separate departments. I bet everybody's breaking this. You just don't tell the company about it. <laughs> we did still love one another deeply. We cuddled on the couch, frequently going to the nearby Blockbuster on the weekend to rent slasher flicks, her favorite, and some movie noms for in-home date nights, and we would retire to separate bedrooms for the evening. In the months going on years that we lived together, I did propose. Her family was overjoyed, as was she, and plans were put in place to get married next year. Our home life, though, was slowly drifting apart. I liked to stay home. She wanted to go out. I would oblige every now and then, which was honestly fun when we did go. Her bubbly personality made every outing a fun one. Her playful teasing made my heart soar. I was in love, but under the surface, unbeknownst to me, things were changing. Uh, I mean, you tried to do right by her, but from the way you've laid it out, it's, it seems pretty incompatible. You kind of got to learn how to jive with each other, you know? She wants to go out. You trust her enough for her to go out. Tell her to go out by herself. You know, she really wants you to go. Okay, maybe once in a while. You also got to learn how to chill out at home. It seems like she is chilling out at home. You got to maybe compromise a little more. And also bang it out a little more. Like, the separate bedroom thing isn't helping all that much. Although I do like the fact that when you creep into your significant other's bedroom, they know what's going to happen, you know? You could play a little bit of that old bedroom intruder. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up. So one night... Heidi came home, crying, and collapsed into my arms. Heidi, OP, I'm so sorry. Oh boy. <laughs> OP, what? Sorry for what? Heidi, sit down. I need to tell you something. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. OP, you can tell me anything, Heidi. I'm in this for the long haul. Heidi, I kissed someone after work today, she said between sobs, and my world came down. I was betrayed. I felt my heart crack. I mean, only a kiss, but yeah, that's it's too far already. I gotta get up and out. I respect myself too much to sit here and have another go, personally. Some people might be like, hey, we can work it out, but but that ain't me. And apparently it ain't Luca either, because this ain't gonna last. OP? Uh, who did that happen with? Heidi? Some guy in my department. It was just a kiss in his car. Nothing more, but I felt awful about it. Now you're trying to downplay it, alright? You feel bad about this, I feel bad about this. Let, let's call it what it is, alright? You cheated. You cheated. You might as well have gone all the way, because you cheated. OP, you just... You don't pay enough attention to me. I feel like we're drifting apart and I was weak in the moment. I'm so sorry. I I'm sorry. She repeated that she was sorry, holding me, crying. I didn't hold her back. I just sat there, processing. Soon I came to a conclusion. Everyone deserves a second chance. Uh, I mean, you do you, bro. <laughs> I'm already out at this point. At least she didn't bang that dude, you know, just kissed him. OP, I, I forgive you, but only once. If this happens again, we're done. Try to be more attentive to your needs, but you're... Well, I chuckled. <laughs> you're a machine, Heidi. 
It's hard to keep you satisfied. Concessions will have to be made on both sides. And I think that's a fair point. That's what every relationship is about. Compromise, right? Heidi nodded and said, I promise. And then the narrator bursts in and he's like, she lied. <laughs> uh, we'll see though. And things went back to normal for the most part. I was distant from her for about a week, but eventually I started my earnest efforts to pay her more carnal attention. There you go. Get your swerve on. You know what I'm saying? How many years you been together? Like one year? I've been together with wifey six years. <laughs> I'll need to tell you how active it is, but it's active. All right. Matt would come over <laughs> every now and then. Glad to not be visiting the den of refuse that was Tulsa Beard. And he made that known quite frequently. Heidi liked to pull me into her room for snuggle time while he was over. I think she got a thrill out of it, and I obliged most times to keep up my end of our bargain. I mean, that seems like kind of a dick move. <laughs> hey, Matt, thanks for coming over. I'm gonna go bang it out over here right now. <laughs> uh, okay, have fun, I guess. I'll make some popcorn. <laughs> Eventually, my birthday came around, and she presented to me a gift. Ooh, a new graphics card for my PC. Ooh, <laughs> I was thrilled. Yeah, boy. She knew my geeky side and played right into it. And I hugged her tightly. I installed it immediately and booted up WoW to be greeted by silky smooth 60 frames per second on my 27 inch CRT monitor. <laughs> uh, after confirming everything worked, I thanked Heidi with a raucous bedroom romp of several rounds. That's true. The best kind of thanking, you know? Birthday sex, birthday sex. Later that night, thoroughly exhausted and minutes from sleep, I booted my computer. I wanted to brag about my new graphics card to someone. Anyone! Yeah, it does be that way, don't it? <laughs> it was well after midnight. I perused my AIM list. Mudbeard was online. Eh, nah. He'd want to play some asinine super robot game with me, and I just wanted to gush. Tulsa Beard was online on Facebook. Or was that Tulsa Beard? Zoom. Enhance. It's the same profile, but the name had changed. Rachel? Oh my god. He had come out as trans, or I suppose she had come out as trans now, and she had moved to Dallas, where her uncle had moved not too long ago. Well, I suppose that's not much of a bow to put on Tulsa Beard's tail, but uh, there it is. I never talked to her again, but I would Facebook stalk her every now and again. <laughs> Just don't say anything. It's fine to look, but no talk, no touch, all right? She'd eventually pop out a few proto-beards with Chihuahua beard, and I imagine they probably lived off welfare or her uncle. Probably a combination of both. God, I feel so sad for those kids. Terrible. Why do things like this happen? <laughs> Why don't we need a license to make babies? Anyways, the only person that I saw online was Lily. I hadn't talked to her in years. My mind flashed back to the sobbing confession of Heidi. Now here, dear readers, is where I am the a-hole. Oh, that kind of relates to the episode that we did yesterday, doesn't it? Hey, hey, can we pass some judgment? Can we glean some catharsis from the situation? I guess we'll see. <laughs> I had spent my entire life to this point in Tulsa telling everyone but Heidi that if Lily so much as said the word, I would drop my entire life to be with her. You didn't. Aw, oh, man. I'm very conflicted about this situation. <laughs> I was afraid of that, and so I didn't contact her. Phew. It's a good choice, Luca. <laughs> I wanted to be with Heidi. I had made up my mind. But in that moment, like Heidi, the hurt welled up, and I was weak. And I opened the chat window. Oh, Luca. 
You, you give me a little bit of hope and then you rip it away from me. Oh, well, I guess I guess we all had those moments, you know? OP says, hey, Lily. Lily, wow. Over two years after you leave and that's what you lead off with? Hey, not off to a good start. You know, I've seen you online for over a year now. Why talk now? <laughs> okay, uh, I take it back. Never mind. Block. <laughs> OP. Yeah, I know. Things have just been complicated. And hey, part of that burden is on you. You could have opened up this window anytime that you wanted, Lily. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. But what is this then? You want to confess your undying love again? You want to lead me on and drop me again? What did you hope to gain from this? Oh, she is just an unrepentant... Is she not? <laughs> I guess she has reason to be salty. We haven't gotten into it, I guess. But no, I'm not liking this initial vibe one little bit. <laughs> you don't point the finger at me. I'm the one that's reaching out, okay? You don't want to be receptive? That's fine. I'll leave. Goodbye, Lily. Sheesh. <laughs> OP says, uh, nothing. Just friends, Lily. I was lonely and just wanted someone to talk to. I got a new graphics card, and I know we're both the nerdy type, so I just wanted to gush, Lily. Oh, that's it. We're friends. Check out my new GPU. Ugh. And she went dark after that. Honestly, she did you a favor. Let it go. Let it go right now. <laughs> I mean, you got some inconsistency, little, little problems going on with Heidi, but running back to this, that's not the answer either. These two women are not your only options, okay? There's a third option, step back, work on yourself, etc., etc. But, uh, oh, I don't know, man. <laughs> if you gotta pick one of these two women, I would stick with Heidi, honestly. The next day, I got home from work to find a message waiting for me on AIM. I quickly set a password to unlock my computer. In my heart, I knew, but I was in denial, and I didn't want Heidi knowing that I was talking to Lily. Oh my god, this is some duplicitous stuff going on right now. If you are ashamed of the things that you are doing, then maybe don't do the things that you're doing, right? I just don't get it. I just, I couldn't live like this. <laughs> Lily? I've thought about it, and we can be friends. You hurt me when you left. Who leaves with a text message? I know, Katrina and apartments, but you could have told me in person at least, but we can be friends. How have you been? <laughs> oh, what a blessing. <laughs> I won't rehash our conversation verbatim, because I really don't remember it verbatim, and because we talked a lot. I told her about Heidi, she told me about her abusive stepfather, how she finally got the stones to stand up to him and move out, and she had an apartment of her own now. Yeah, see, that's the hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I'm not, I'm not good with this, man. <laughs> I was proud of her, and I told her as much. We talked on and off for a few months, sharing like we used to, music, anime recommendations, jokes, reminiscing about the mud. Bro, your life is like forking into two different paths right now. And I can't tell you which one to take, but I know which one I would take, and it's not the one you're currently taking. All right? <laughs> but Luca tells it like it is, you know? As he says at the end, own your mistakes, and that he is currently doing, I guess. He wouldn't be the person that he is without having gone through this experience, so... Yeah, it is what it is, man. Lily was still sort of active on the mud, and she was dating one of the people that she knew from there. Heidi and I continued our relationship, myself trying to hold up my end of the bargain, and herself trying to hold up her end. Yeah, it is kind of falling apart, isn't it? All right, option three, step back, work on yourself. This is not, mm-mm, don't do it. <laughs> Daniel started coming over to hang out after work. We'd play some games and drink, and he would often drink himself to the point of us taking his keys in order to sleep it off. Okay. It's not gonna go well. It's not gonna go well. <laughs> it was a normal life. Friends, hangouts, family life, the usual American dream. 
minus the picket fence and the kids. Kids wouldn't happen until we were married, which is totally gonna happen, by the way. <laughs> I'm sure. I was happy. My chats with Lily eventually surfaced because I was convinced that we were friends and I wanted to be transparent with Heidi. Ugh. <laughs> She was a little concerned about me talking to a former beau, but accepted it. One day, Heidi had to work late, and I went to Buffalo Wild Wings with Daniel. We were a few drinks in, and Daniel clasped a hand on my shoulder. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. It's a disaster. The whole thing's a disaster. <laughs> Daniel? OP, I have to tell you something. OP? Sure, man. What's up? Daniel, Heidi cheated on you. And my heart cracked again. I sighed, lowering my head, the alcohol in my heart making tears start to well up. OP, I, I know Daniel. She told me. She kissed a dude in the parking lot one time. We, we got past that, but I am glad that you told me. Daniel, no, OP. She, like, really cheated. OP, what? Daniel, one night I was drunk and sleeping on the couch and she came out to get some water. Well, my dong was like hanging out of my boxers and she like, well, sucked it. Oh my God. Oh, oh, I hate it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's been a long time coming. You guys kind of incompatible and stuff like that. And then Luca's off you know, spreading what affection he has to this other chick that he's deeply head over heels for. So, of course, Heidi's not getting the attention she feels she deserves, and she wasn't even getting it before Lily was introduced anyways. While she shouldn't have done all that, yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. I, I don't see any other way that this could have gone over the course of many years. Oh, that hurts. This whole thing's a hot mess, man. I don't know how to fix any of this. Break it. <laughs> Separate from everyone and everything involved here. I can't. I can't, dude. Jesus. Like, part of me wants to thank Daniel for telling me, and the other part wants to punch him in the mouth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why didn't you stop her? Bam! But really, he's not to blame. Wrong place, wrong time. Uh, I didn't know how to respond, honestly. I wanted to punch him, I wanted to cry, I wanted to leave, I wanted to drink, I wanted to do anything but believe him, but I knew it. I knew that it was true. I downed my beer. God, Daniel, why did you let her? Daniel, I was drunk, and it's not like I have the moral high ground here to tell you that I didn't want it to get sucked. <laughs> <laughs> He's blunt, but he has a point. <laughs> OP. Well, that does it then. Second chance blown. I wouldn't tell Heidi that I knew, but I withdrew from her entirely. I talked with Lily more, told her about the cheating. She said I should drop Heidi like a stone. I agreed, but I had to figure out my living arrangements first. Oh, man. <laughs> None of this is going to fix anything. Although, not that I'm implying that this can be fixed, but uh, it's, it's frustrating, man. Breaks my heart, if I'm quite honest. Heidi knew that I was withdrawing, and I'm sure she had her suspicions, but she wouldn't say anything. See, y'all need to communicate better, you know? Communication and compromise, that's two of the C's in the relationship. I think there's also a U for unity and an S for suck. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a good joke, right? I would tell Heidi that I was tired and she would just say, fine. And one night I was talking to Lily, as I did most nights now, when it happened. Lily, I can't do this anymore, OP. I can't be friends with you. We have to stop talking. Oh, you're so dramatic. <laughs> Uh, okay, OP says, well, that's kind of out of nowhere. Before you go, would you at least tell me why, Lily? Because I'm still in love with you. Oh, I didn't see that one coming at all. 
<laughs> Yo, wild. Honestly, this is like some high school stuff that's going on right now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Too much drama. I would check out. And that is where we will leave the tale of Tulsa Beard. He, she, now, was a character. As far as I know, she's still trans, living with Chihuahua Beard, taking care of their little beardlings. As vile as the idea of a beard procreating is, I do hope that they found happiness. Despite him blackmailing me, it was my own impropriety and foolishness that allowed that door to be opened in the first place. Next time on the Lucas Cinematic Universe, The Ballad of Lily, Part 1. No apologies for spelling or grammar mistakes. Own your mistakes. Luca, out. Now, I do have some really strong feelings about cheating, even just to kiss, even just chatting to somebody. Like, that's emotional cheating, isn't it? So I don't want to say too much. Like, <laughs> I got choice words for Heidi, but I'm going to just keep it wound back for a little bit because Luca, he did have his fault in this as well. And he laid it out, he told the truth, he should be given some credence for that. But at the end of the day, like, you cheated emotionally, which probably Heidi felt in some type of way. She cheated physically, just because, I don't know, she's really that insatiable, apparently. If you can't perform like that, then, you know, maybe bring some toys in to help you out, or... I don't really know what to tell you, man. <laughs> It just seems overall that you weren't compatible, and while the breakup was sort of inevitable from what I can see, the way that it went is just really ugly. And in that sort of situation, you probably should take a step back and, you know, reassess yourself. Do some work within yourself before jumping into another relationship. It's never good to, like, leapfrog from one chick to the next. At least not in a relationship if it's a casual type of thing you do you you know what i'm saying but <laughs> i don't know it's just not for me that's what i know who had a bigger misstep heidi or luca i would definitely say heidi but she tried her best with the relationship so did luca it didn't work out you know people come into your life they leave your life and lessons are learned so tough lesson but uh i think luca's not quite done with the learning process because next up, he's moving in with Lily, and we have heard quite a bit about her. I hope you'll join me for that, and I hope that you enjoyed this episode, friends. If you did, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. Uh, maybe share the video around. Check out them links in the description, plugs, playlist, podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Teespring, if you're trying to rock that merch. <laughs> We've also got, a, you know, a Twitch live stream where I read this whole thing. And social medias, you know, Twitter, Discord, Facebook. You make it do what it do, if you want. I would also like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members right now, Jerry, Jerry, much. So thank you too. Starting with channel members, Tiny Boy, Angel Dark, Bedazzle Misery, Skyler Rain, The Fez Wearer, The One Gay Cop, Belly Eye Crane, She's a Rosie Rainbow, Slow Spooner, Jerry, Sean Cantwell, Heaven Sent, Robert Timothy, Jackie McQuitty, Grim Stride, Trainboy, AJ Collins, Tooth Blushing, Corey Arts, Kelly Clark, Lickalish Loser, Florentine Waver, Dungeon Bat, Billy D, Robert Waits, Brandon Ashcroft, Phantom Danica, Orgamy Steve, Skyler Rain, Morning Star, The Gypsy Barber, Fire Drake, Samantha, Death Selection, Bearded Snake, Buy Two, Get One Hand. On the Patreon side, we got Miss Black, Harley Hoy, Robert Waits, Camille Sarah, Chancellor, Blue Kraken, Roxanne Wilson, Jerry Vixie, Conrad Ingy, Fluxer, The Captain of Industries, I don't got friends, I got tendies. <laughs> Uh, Captain Cloud Jerry, Ellipses, Aaron Jerry, Deku, Esteban, Okay, Steve, Beat Dog with a bag of bombs from Dad, Devil Jerry, Pay for Forgiveness, Santa Jerry, Silo Robber, BCB, The Original Jerry, Jerry, Take Jerry, 211 Jerry, The Two Jerry's, Destiny Piper, Jerry, Kitsune, Salty Wizard, A Very Tired Jerry, Yeah, I feel it, <laughs> A Dusty Dark Jerry, And Frankie Berry, Ain't that a hot bitch though? Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Baby Jerry, Goo Gaga, <laughs> Baby Joe, Peter Jerry, Benji of the Jets, Billy D, Benji Bell, Blade the Hero, Bronze Crack, Commander J Tank, Dr. Larks, Aaron Era, Erratic Mechanic, East Box, Frozen Number Studio, Fire Drake, Gizmo Jack, Hadrian BR, Inquisitor Jerry, Irish Pirate, Lost the Blue Marble in a Mutiny, Oh, we can get it back for you, bro, Iron All Already in the Jam, JM Coon, Jerry Smith, Jerry Blackfield, Jerry Dallam on the Truck of Hong Kong, Jerry, 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 I'm begging of you, please don't take my bread. <laughs> it's so delicious. Crew he, Kelly Dragon Lady, Italian Greyhound Dino, Lady in Awakening, Lauren Crow, Legend Maker, Lord Jerry O, Leader of the Thunder Jerry's, Luke Mix was a race car driver, he was a good friend of mine, he never did win that checkered flag, but I helped him drink his wine. I actually listened to that song. Uh, you're welcome. Like and subscribe. <laughs> but Lady Nix, Meldar the Destroyer, matter of fact, uh, I'm here because my cringe senses are tingling. Yeah, this was a good episode for that, wasn't it? Needless King 89, Paragon Soul, Phantom of the Pines, Jerry and Jerry Beth, Queens, Quaint Lutes and Quagmires, Ramside, Lacrimage, Rose, Jerry Miller, Sarita the Lolita, Scarlet Kevin, Sergeant Gaycop, Rerun the Law, Silo Wimp, Steampunk, Ellie, Stephanie Gunner, Side After Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, The Gypsy Barber, The Lilith 2, Who Would You Fusky? This isn't even my final beard. <laughs> That's true, we got many to go. Uh, try to find another bomb to get back to the real world. Vanguard, Angel, BC3, Viking Jerry, Wiki Tech, Zephyr the Gargoyle, or Clay, Voice and Collector of Cringe, Comrade Moody, Kira, not another Jerry, but he is though. KJ Alex, Red Wind, Bad Penny Lane, Dog Viper, Saint Blessing, Third Stuff, Venom Jerry, we are Venom Jerry, Jace Christensen, Arnold Voice, even the weebs, we can see the L train it. <laughs> yeah, 
We can try at least. One leg Jerry has returned from battle. A normal Jerry, all right, right. I'll bring you Doritos, but I count on your expertise if they attract beards, which they definitely will. Admiral T Tank, Emmer Alder, another stupid hipster. Atomic Jerry Zilla, the bartender Kelly, a big dad wolf, broken spine horse radish, the original different Jerry, uh, Cake Jerry, <laughs> California Jerry Girl, Chevron Seven Lock, Chicago the Panda, Corey does commissions now. Hey, Griff Kitty Stefan Jerry, Death Tuna, Dilf Jerry, Dwarfy Dude, Dwarven Ramses, half the calories, all the hate. <laughs> Get to at the doodles again. Commissions open. Jerry Boo's daughter, Ghost of Alpha Graymon three six five, half Slavic Jerry in a tracksuit. <laughs> Uh, he cannot. Hydra, Jerry Solomon, Janitor, Jerry, Roman, the streets of Finland, hunting down the Rudo headband. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Gerald of Arabia, Jerry, but with two S's and E, that's Jesse. Jerry Springer, the results are in. You are not the neckbeard. All right. Jerry, the Sussibaka, Jerry's mom has got it going on. Look at that mustache on Jerry Old Rivera. Jerry Roxas, Jerry, role playing game. Kid Mobilis, Kids Again, Lucia Left Rat, Machia CD. Maybe next time, Milk Figure, Miss Duchess, Mr. Gasman, Not Invisible Angel, Raptor, Selden Dark, Scalabay Morning Star again. Wow. Snarry, that's snob Jerry, if you didn't know. Spoony the Rogue, Spoopy, Scary Jerry Ton is relevant all year round. We're almost in October again. God, it really does go around, doesn't it? Soof, too fast. Techno Dubs, the original Jerry. They call him Jerry Two Knives, Jerry Pie, Titus Trucker Dunker. <laughs> what? Two for the Jerry and beyond. Tokyo Bird, Unkale, Vaughn, throws two leader Mountain Dew, grow my neck, beer, grow. <laughs> it's Jerry time, hold Red X Warfare. Hygiene, it's Jerry time, hold Red X Warfare. Humility, and thank you, of course, to my $1 patrons as well. Bless up all the Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. Oh my goodness, you guys doing the most out here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> if you can afford to support alongside these wonderful people, that would be absolutely huge. If you can't afford it monetarily, I mean, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate that you came on through, hung out with me. I hope you'll come on back and hang out with us again tomorrow in order to do so. You need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out. Do something you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watching some more Red X videos, right? Cool. Sweet. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye. Uh,